historically, your club has always come through in a situation like tonight. Well, not always, uh, Tim. <laughs> I hope that's true. Uh, we have a tough game ahead of us tonight. I think our kids realize that. The last time we were down here in 1984, we got a good looking. And I think we've remembered that. And I think we're going to play well. We have practiced very hard. Uh, we, we have a, we've had a lot of intensity. Uh, hopefully, that'll carry over into the ball game tonight. West Virginia, of course, when you last met them on this turf, scored the biggest upset perhaps in the history of the school. Seven of their 11 defensive players are on this team tonight. But offensively, you've got to be concerned about which guy's going to be throwing the ball. Well, uh, you know, Reed, I think, is a fairly fine prospect, and it'd be a shame if, if Don Nalen doesn't have him. But uh, he indicated to me before the game we were talking that uh, probably Timco will play, and the other kid may not. He's hurt, which is a shame because uh, Don's struggling a little bit right now. He has a fine football team that's been on a self-destruct mission. Mm -hmm. uh, if they put it all together, they'll be awfully tough for us. Coach Larry Burnett in the studio here at ESPN. DJ Dozier, your running back, not having Heisman-type statistics this year, but here's a guy who's playing a role for your team and really doing a heck of a job, isn't he? I didn't quite get the question, but something about the running back? About DJ Dozier oh, yeah. and whether or not he is having a great year from I a team so. standpoint. DJ Dozier is probably as good an all-around tailback as there is in the country right now. He's blocking extremely well, catching the ball very well. He's not only a, an elusive back who can give you the big play, he gets the tough yards for you, too. Uh, he's a, just an ideal tailback. He, he blocks well for the fullbacks and what have you. Joe, this is Chris Berman in the studio. I know in the, uh, in the summer there was a lot of thought on your mind about Schaefer or Kisner, a quarterback. That was a tough decision for you. Obviously, it has worked well so far. But do, can you reflect on what went through your mind in making that choice, Coach? Well, they're two very fine young men, and I want to be fair with both of them. Kisner's going to be an outstanding quarterback in his own right when he gets his football team next year. But I felt Schaefer had the experience. Uh, he had, had taken a lot of uh, abuse for uh, oh, the one football game we lost. Uh, I blamed a lot of the fact that he wasn't a little bit more proficient with the passing game because of the fact that our offensive line was inexperienced, our wideouts were inexperienced, and we probably didn't do as good a job coaching the passing game taking those things into consideration. Uh, we changed some things and uh, uh, made it a little bit easier for John, and I think John's showing what kind of a quarterback he actually is. Joe, we want to thank you for taking time out to join us. Good. It's good to have ESPN with us again. Thank All you. All right. The beast from the east, the Penn State Nittany Lions of Coach Joe Paterno <laughs> taking on the West Virginia Mountaineers. It's coming up shortly. Let's go back now to Larry and Chris. Take Thanks on the invading Nittany Lions of Penn State. The Nittany Lions won it all four years ago, capping a great regular season with a solid victory in the Sugar Bowl. Penn State did it Joe Paterno's way with great defense and big plays on offense. And by winning a consensus national championship, the Lions finally destroyed the myth that Eastern football might be good, but not good enough to place a team at the pinnacle of college football. In 1986, Penn State is unbeaten again. And after dominating Alabama a week ago, Joe Paterno is focusing on another championship season. The Nittany Lions have all the weapons, too, beginning with D.J. Dozier, who is not only their leading rusher, but their leading receiver as well. And he has always run well against West Virginia. But Penn State makes a living with its defense, and its linebackers are the keys. All-American Shane Conlon is the Nittany Lions' leading tackler on a unit allowing less than two yards a run. West Virginia will have to make up for its lack of experience and depth of talent with emotion. The kind of emotion that helped them to a dramatic upset of Penn State here in Morgantown two years ago. Until that night, the Mountaineers had not beaten Penn State since Sam Huff was a senior here in 1955. The memory lingers as West Virginia prepares to meet the Nittany Lions of Penn State on ESPN. Cyprus fans in West Virginia hopeful of deja vu as their 2-5 and five team takes on Penn State. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Brando. Now, West Virginia does have a mountain to climb tonight in taking on unbeaten and second or third ranked, if you prefer, Penn State. Coach Don Nalen would like to believe he can pass against Penn State tonight, but he's got a problem there. His quarterback, Ben Reed, last week against Boston College was injured. He separated his shoulder, did not practice all week. So Mike Timko will have to be the uh, trigger that makes their gun shoot. He is much shorter than Ben Reed. And uh, Nalen is very concerned that he'll have difficulty reading coverages and throwing over that mammoth line. Now, Mike Patrick and Pat McAnally, you both know how much the quarterback spot really means, particularly when you're sitting two and five as Don Nalen is. 
Well, Tim, you're, you're exactly right. And, of course, quarterback is always so critical to you, but especially against Penn State because, as you said, you have to throw to move the ball against them because no one's found a way to run on them, Pat. Well, you can run against Penn State, Mike. Uh, problem is you have to call the right play at the right time, execute it perfectly, and then you have a chance of breaking a few four or five yarders. They're that yeah, good. That's right. And that's what makes it so tough on Coach Nealon. He had a quarterback, Ben Reed, who was playing very well. He was injured. He comes back. Now he has to play Mike Timko, who started the season. He was the original starter. He didn't play well, and he is shorter, as Tim said, and he's really not very confident. Now, West Virginia had such high hopes for this year, but through seven weeks, they are only two and five. Well, they've had a tough combination. First of all, they came into the year very young. They had to replace most of the players that made this a powerhouse. Then they had a lot of injuries. They lost most of their secondary. And finally, they've had so many turnovers, 12 in the last three games. You don't win with youth injuries and turnovers. Now you look at Penn State, and you've got no problems. They have everything you'd want. Well, they came into 86. You know, they almost won the title last year, and we had them early in the season against BC. And they had so many returning starters, we couldn't believe the depth, the experience, yeah. and the talent they had. I went back to my notes, and incredibly, they haven't lost anyone to injuries. So when you have talent and you have luck, that's what you get to be number two or three in the country. It's Penn State against West Virginia from a sold-out Mountaineer field in Morgantown. We'll be back with more on this ball game right after this. We are back at Mountaineer Field where tonight it's West Virginia taking on Penn State. Now the Nittany Lions have had great leadership on the offensive side of the ball this year from two players, two dominant players. They are John Schaefer, the team's quarterback, along with D.J. Dozier. They're quiet men, quiet leaders, and they've had much to do with the success of Penn State all year. This is Happy Valley USA, and why are they so happy here in Happy Valley? Well, because as sure as the leaves turn orange in the fall, the Penn State Nittany Lions will make a run on college football's national championship. One of the reasons that Lions are in this position is quarterback John Schaefer. While some critics doubt his athletic prowess, you'll get no such comment from his coach. He, uh, he's the kind of a guy that can take adversity and rally the people around him and say, hey, we're okay, we're gonna, we'll do something, and then goes and does it. He's a great clutch performer because he's got a lot of poise. People often say, what is poise? And poise is the ability to do the tough things under a tremendous amount of pressure without losing your concentration. Schaefer is indeed a great leader, but what does all of that really mean? You know, it's, it's tough to put your finger, finger on any leadership qualities. I think that it's awfully important for a quarterback to be a leader because, you know, I think that we've been in some tough situations both this year and last year, and, and, it, and when you're down a couple points and you don't have a whole lot of time left, you know, people are going to look to somebody that, that's going to be able to say, hey, we can still do this. You know, I know that, that no matter how many points we're down, how much time's left, we'll be able to put some points on the board. And, and I think it's that confidence that, that helps, I guess, develop those leadership qualities. He's a good person. He's a genuinely good person who is not self-centered. He doesn't have a selfish bone in his body. Uh, and I think when you get a guy like that, people want to play for him. People have confidence in, him, in his, his ability to lead them. They want him to succeed. He's a born uh, natural leader, and uh, he's, he's, with that natural ability, he's grown with it. And in doing that, he's grown with the Penn State football team. And uh, guys learn to respect him simply because he knows how to lead a team. If for some reason Schaefer does have problems leading the Lions, D.J. Dozier does not. He gets it done in a variety of ways, and mentally especially. He's a great all-around football player. He's probably as good an all-around running back as there's in the country. He blocks extremely well. He's a great receiver. He's not only a breakaway back, he's a tough runner. He can get you to tough yards, and, and uh, great. he's a great leader out there. So he's, he, he's very much like a lot of the kids on this team. They're very team-oriented. DJ is team-oriented, but so much so he's not considered a Heisman candidate. Does that bother him? Uh, no, it doesn't, simply because I knew it would happen. Uh, because Penn State is a team-oriented uh, type, type team. And uh, coming to Penn State, uh, I knew that. I knew that uh, statistics weren't first, uh, shouldn't be first in any organization. But uh, Penn State played a, a team-oriented game, and uh, that's the way they won. And that's, that's what I uh, expected, and that's, you know, that's what I'm here for. Runs like this one last week at Alabama, though, have earned Dozier everyone's respect. You know, he's he's a, he's more of a leader by example. Uh, you know, he goes out there if you need three, four yards in a tough situation, he'll get them for you. He's a guy, he's a kind of guy to give them to, give the football to. He's a he's a great person off the field. Uh, he's a he's a great leader, a great football player on the field. He's, he's again like Jake, for very mature for his age. Uh, has a, gr a great deal of sense of confidence. He's uh, 
he's not the kind of a kid that, that ever thinks he's not going to get it done. I mean, and he looks for tough games. And the tougher the going gets, the tougher he is. And that's since he's very much like a big He's a committed football player for the team. He's, got, he's a very ambitious kid, a very, very strong competitor, <clears throat> but he never goes beyond, hey, I've got to do the best I can, but that's not as important as what's good for the team. Schaefer and DJ Dozier are mirror images of one another, and they fit just like the white shoes, the white crews and black shoes in the Joe Paterno system. Larry and Bino, you can understand that readily. And speaking of Larry and Bino, they'll be keeping us posted on all the other games tonight. We sure will. And talking about John Schaefer, all the guy does is win. And D.J. Dozier, as we said earlier, he's not putting up Heisman-type numbers, but he's doing exactly what he needs to do in that offense. Is it really four years ago, four football seasons ago at Dozier, we became aware of him, the Alabama game on CBS? Until then, nobody heard of him. Penn State was the underdog and took a 34-7 lead against Alabama and won it 34-28. As for Schaefer, the Harrisburg Patriot News took a poll last year of its readers. Who should start a quarterback? Matt Kinzer won easily, but he will get his chance next year. Paterno went with Schaefer, and Schaefer will probably lead Penn State to the national title. Schaefer took a terrible verbal beating from Penn State fans after the Orange Bowl. It was unfair. He's quite a kid. He's lost one game in three million years. There was also a poll in Pittsburgh. They wanted Bubby Brister for the Steelers instead of Mark Malone, too. So uh, what can you say for polls? We're going to be coming back at halftime. We'll have a special feature. We'll be taking a look at the Citrus Bowl and the Fiesta Bowl. Two bowls looking for two independents, possibly Miami and Penn State, to battle for the national title. We'll be going live to Morgantown, talking with some officials, and we'll be back. Back here in Morgantown with a sellout crowd, Mike Patrick, Pat McAnally, and Tim Brando down on the sideline with us. We want to go over Pat McAnally's keys for this ball game. First for West Virginia on offense. They simply haven't put any points on the board, Pat. Well, they have moved the ball well all year between the 20s, which does nothing but build statistics. So yeah. tonight, when they move the ball, they have to score. When they don't move the ball, they have to avoid the turnovers, which we mentioned earlier, and they're going to have to punt very well and cover it. All right, that might be one of the big keys in the ball game. We'll keep you up to date on all the other ones. We will be back with the kickoff of tonight's game from Morgantown, West Virginia. take the opening kickoff. Got a little audio problem for you. Sorry about that. We've got everything straightened out. And Charlie Bauman, who has been playing with a bad leg, will kick off. His kicks have not been going nearly as deep. Coates and Blair Thomas are deep to receive and listen to the crowd. They are really into this ball game. Bauman didn't get all of this one. And it's Coates. Across the 20, flag is down. He gets to the 27-yard line. A flag is down back at the 17. And it's a clip against Penn State. That will move the Nittany Lions back inside their 20-yard line. There's senior quarterback John Schaefer. He's coming off one of his best games ever, 13 of 17 against Alabama. Got some great running backs behind him, too. D.J. Dozier, number 42, is the starting back. He's their best receiver, their best running back. They don't throw a lot, but they can. The offensive line, all seniors, has given Joe Paterno the kind of domination he wants up front. And the crowd is really into it, Pat. Uh, it could be a big factor tonight. They're going to need everything they can get to win this game. That was a nice break on the kickoff right there. They got him back inside the 10-yard line. Sure was. Sellout crowd of 63-5. There is Schaefer. He is a better passer this year, more accurate. Except for the Orange Bowl game. He has won 54 straight games as a starting quarterback. Unbelievable. First and 10. Nittany Lions from their own 9-yard line. 
and they'll give it to Smith, trying to get outside. Got two yards. Hit hard. Coming up from the secondary, Travis Curtis and Darnell Warren. Stack him up, and they're going after each other early. <laughs> well, they need the, uh, as much game tackling as they can get. West Virginia's defense, they've been tentative this year. Hunt is the biggest lineman, at times their best. The All-American candidate is Matt Smith. He moves from the outside to the inside because of injuries. And the secondary, which has been roundly criticized by the local press, has not played well this year, and they have injury problems on top of it. A gain of two for the Nittany Lions at second and eight for their own 11. Coach is the man in motion. Schaefer to throw. Under some pressure. And a flag goes down as they have him at the 11-yard line. The tackle made by Brad Hunt. Schaefer couldn't find anybody open. And Hunt, at 282 pounds out of Ripley, West Virginia, made the tackle. Well, it's a nice job by the uh, secondary right here. They've been maligned all year, but they definitely took away all the open receivers. Shaver's taking his time, looking over the field. He's back down to three or four guys right here, but he has nobody. He's still buying time, and finally Hunt's going to run him down. That's exactly what they need to do. They have to take away those quick passes. And they throw the flag. It is going to be, I believe, against West Virginia. And they are calling holding, defensive holding against West Virginia. And Don Nealon cannot be happy about the turn of events here on the opening series Holding of downs. against the defensive team. First down. That one's tough to figure out, isn't it? Well, that may be one reason why the receivers weren't open. They might have been holding on to the guy. And couldn't get out. Well, the official threw the flag right where the tackle was. And I don't know how, if you're trying to make a tackle, how you can be called for holding. But that was the call. So it's first and ten for the Nittany Lions out of their own 23. Those are the deep man in the eye. And Dozier will take it. And Dozier will go absolutely nowhere. And it was Darnell Warren, the first man to hit him, number 54. He stood him up and got a lot of help. This does not look like the West Virginia defense that has played most of this year. They are really going after people. Well, Coach Nealon said that emotion would be the major factor in this game. You know, they have a lot of youth, and you can get that youth and exuberance going. They've got the players. They're big across the front. 282, 278, 273, the interior three of that defense. Second and nine. And here's the reverse. It's going to be big. To the West Virginia 46-yard line. Ray Roundtree on a big play. Stacy Smith had to make the tackle. Coach made a great block for him. Well, this is what Penn State does so well. They run those balls up the middle. They set it up. They run round three around the end, and he's averaging over 18 a carry this year on this play, and he almost breaks this all the way. But as you can see, there's not a black jersey in the picture, just a lead blocker. He almost broke this all the way. But again, that's excellent play calling. They set that up with the running game. Countering West Virginia's pursuit early. First and 10, Nittany Lions in about near territory at the 46-yard line. Schaefer wants to throw and has time. Good coverage, has to dump it off short. Complete, got his tight end, Cyberling. From Cyberling down to the West Virginia, 29-yard line. Driven out of bounds there by Stacy Smith and Travis Curtis. Schaefer had all day to throw. Well, that's, that does not bode well for West Virginia. They're going to have to put pressure on them. You know, Mike, we've seen him play a couple times this year at Penn State, and they really aren't as conservative as people think. They'll throw the play no, action not. balls at you. They'll run reverses inside the 20. They just are so consistent with the regular game when they throw these type of wrinkles into their offensive game plan, they're big plays. It's another first and ten for the Nittany Lions. Undefeated ranked seven, second or third, depending on which poll you like. Hamilton, the man in motion again, and they'll give it off to Dozier. Dozier ripped at the line of scrimmage. The first man that got a hand on him was David Grant, then he got a lot of help. Dozier has traditionally had big games against West Virginia. Penn State has always seemed to be able to run on the Mountaineers, but not right now. Let's take a look at Matt Smith, number 50, right at the top of your screen. He's an All-American candidate, and they're going to have to block him. You'll see uh, all night they're going to assign the lineman to block him, keep him out of the plays. Big difference for Smith. He had to move from the outside to the inside because those inside linebackers, all the young kids have been injured. He may be better inside, Pat. They can play either one, that's for sure. Second down and eight yards to go. Smith, the pullback, not much. Not near doing a good job on defense in the interior of that line. And it was number 94, Chris Parker, who made the tackle, a 278-pound sophomore. 
Brings down Steve Smith, the senior from Clinton, Maryland. Last week in the second half especially, West Virginia completely shut down Boston's college offense, and they still lost. That's been their problem this year. They haven't been able to score points. Big play, third and five. Hamilton comes to the near side. Round three to the far side. They split the backs and Dozier in motion. Want to throw for Dozier. He's the guy they're looking for. Throwing. He's got it. Touchdown, Penn State. They sent Matt Smith with him man for man, but Dozier had a step, and Schaefer laid it in there. 23 yards for the score. Now just another boring touchdown for Penn State, right? Their guys are too slow. They're just going to sit back right here, rolls a little left, and D.J. Dozier just runs a sprint up the sidelines man to man against a linebacker, and that's just no match. And this is a beautiful throw. They say Schaefer doesn't throw the well. Look at that, right between two receivers. And that's a big thing that coming into the season. They wanted to make Dozier more of a receiver, and he is their leading receiver, and it's helped their offense immeasurably. Going to help his uh, chances for a first-round draft pick, too, as if he already didn't have one locked up. That's Massimo Monka for the field goal. And here in Morgantown, it's 7-0 Penn State. It's not surprising that Penn State scores in the opening quarter. They have totally dominated the opposition in the first quarter, giving up only three points this year. West Virginia's only scored three. Well, here's the test right here. They're playing a man-to-man -man underneath. Five guys, you'll see they're trailing all over the field. Now, number four, Stacy Smith, should have been over there and taken that ball away from Dozier, but he didn't get back into his zone. And Schaefer's a happy man. He's done that for years and years. As Mike said, he's won 54 out of 55 games in high school and college, and yet everybody says he can't throw the ball. He can throw the ball. Don Nealon, who is uh, suffering possibly through the first losing season of his career at West Virginia. He's done a great job since he's been in Morgantown. And there is Massimo Maka, who will kick it off. The deep man is Darren Fulton, number 23, who is averaging 18.8 yards a kickoff as long this year. has been 51 yards. And the kicking game is going to be important for West Virginia, too, to try to get that offense into decent field position. Monka crushes it. Fulton three yards deep and he'll down it there, so West Virginia will start from its own 20-yard line. Penn State drove 91 yards in four minutes and five seconds. They did it mostly with the pass. Dozier capped it off, 23-yard pass from John Shape for the touchdown. This is Mike Timko, the quarterback who starts in place of the injured Ben Reed. He'll have to find a way to do the job tonight. Behind him, keep an eye on John Hollifield, the tailback. These receivers are pretty good for West Virginia, including the former quarterback John Talley. And the interior line is very young and includes a freshman and three sophomores. They'll give it to Hollifield. He wants to go outside. Got a good block to the 29, maybe the 30-yard line. Penn State's defense led by Conlon, the All-American outside linebacker. The inside backers are tough, too. Bauer was great against Alabama. The secondary can be thrown on Pat, but you need time, and it's the one thing Penn State won't give you. Well, the other thing about that secondary is they get a lot of turnovers. They picked up a lot of fumbles. They make a lot of big plays on interceptions. So they might look vulnerable, but a lot of times you'll throw the ball and end up with nothing. It is a first down for West Virginia. Tim Coe starting for the injured Ben Reed. Fake to Hollifield. <laughs> Duffy Cobbs makes the tackle. Ball carrier was Darren Fulton, and he is listed as the fourth string tailback. <laughs> and there's, there's somebody's got one of those Joe Paterno cutouts. Joe's uh, the cutout's cold. Darren Fulton, number 23, was in the backfield for the Mountaineers that time. A surprise from Don Neely. Give it off to the fullback, Chris Pecon. And Pecon can only get back to the original line of scrimmage and not much more than that. Don Graham, one of the outside linebackers, in on the stop. So it's going to be third and long for West Virginia. The one position they don't want to be in against this defense. Well, there is the out. real Joe Paterno, not the cutout. Well, they came out with a nice sweep on that first play, Mike. I was surprised they were able to get outside because uh, Penn State is so tough laterally. Then they went with a couple misdirections, and Penn State's so quick, they just stopped him in the backfield. Third and ten. Tim Coe had a five-game winning streak. The last three of 1985, the first two this year, but has not played well since, and Reed has replaced them in several games until he was hurt. Here's the delay. Hollifield. 
Needed a block downfield and didn't get it. If he had, he would have picked up the first down. He was stopped by Eddie Johnson. Let's go to Larry Burnett for an update. Larry. Lance carry on to punt. Coach lets it go, and the ball will be down at the 28-yard line. We have eight minutes and 48 seconds to go. First quarter after a 38-yard punt. It's Penn State 7, West Virginia nothing. 7-0 Penn State. The Nittany Lions will have the ball on offense for the second time. And Pat, that first drive, uh, West Virginia did what we said they would have to do. They stopped the run. They still got burned. Oh, well, they really did. They stuffed everything inside, but they got hurt on that reverse and a couple passes. And that's why Penn State's undefeated this year. They're not one-dimensional. They'll run if, they, if you give it to them, but they'll take the big plays elsewhere if you take away the run. Smith and Dozier split the backs this time. Fake to Smith. Schaefer on the roll, throws over the middle to Cyberling, 40, 50, into West Virginia territory at the 49-yard line. Driven out of bounds by Smith, but Schaefer has been on target everything he's thrown. Oh, this is just excellent execution, very nice planning. They move Cyberling over to the left, and now he's going to cross across. They've got a deep uh, receiver down, and he just comes right under and finds the zone. Nice little stop, nice throw again. That's what you want. He's wide open. Matt Smith's a little confused here. That's what play action does. He, he doesn't get his coverage because he's up trying to stop the run. And that's the commitment the Mountaineers have had to make to stop the run. Penn State's come out throwing. First and 10, West Virginia 48. They're back in the eye. Schaefer to throw again. Near sideline, and this time overthrown intended for Roundtree. And out there was Travis Curtis on the coverage, but Schaefer just missed his target. <laughs> Penn State is averaging seven and a half yards on first down, and that'll win you a lot of ball games. Even Bino should know Penn State is number one. Everybody likes to pick on Bino, huh? Well, he's in a tough position, though. He's got to make those calls every week, and we beat him the first week, you know, on our That's call right. against Miami. And then you never pick him. <laughs> it is second and ten. I tell you what, somebody's going to have to beat Miami on the field in order to take number one away from him. Schaefer to throw. Here comes the blitz. And he's got the screen to Dozier. Flag goes down as the pass is incomplete. Could have been a hold on that one. West Virginia defense the screen pass very well. And it will be a hold against Penn State. So it's either third and ten or you take the penalty. We'll see what the Mountaineers choose to do. I wouldn't want to give him another down myself. Oh, they got to push him back. But I'll tell you, that's such a tough thing on a quarterback. You know, you have your linemen. They let the people rush in. And then you don't have a receiver open, and you got these big guys coming at you. No protection. So sometimes those screens backfire on you. He was lucky to get that away. They'll mark off the 10 yards. Holding against the offense. Repeat second down. So now it's second and 20. And the ball spotted at the Penn State 42. Schaefer brings him out. Takes the draw. Got plenty of time again. Now under pressure, and they got him. Rodney Wilson, number 89, who is a freshman starting an outside left linebacker tonight because of an injury, and that is West Virginia's situation all up and down the defense. Freshman, sophomore, back and forth. A lot of young guys, but I'll tell you one thing. This uh, sack should definitely go to the secondary. He must have had eight or nine seconds here to throw. They just kept rushing and kept, kept coming. Finally, they dropped it, but you got to give it to the secondary. Third and 24. There's a good look at Rodney Wilson, the freshman out of the nation's capital. Schaefer straight back. Three-man rush this time. A wide open sideline. Cyberling. Cyberling wide open. He caught the pass and stepped out of bounds. Very close to the first down marker. And he's got the first down. Now, you drop eight people back on defense. How does he get that wide open? Well, he's six foot seven for one thing. I don't think someone shorter would have caught this ball. Nice release. He just splits inside here. Goes off the back. And now he'll just find the zone. This is what Penn State does so well. And Schaefer throws the ball so well. But again, you're six foot seven. You pull that down. That's just a nice play. He was an excellent basketball player, and he showed it right there. Excellent hands, eye-hand coordination, came through for the first down. The strong safety, Larry Holly, number nine, came racing past Cyberling to cover somebody who was short on third and 24, and that let that zone wide open. Coach in motion. 
to Dozier. He'll break this one. Holly makes the tackle as he gets to the 25-yard line. Uh, you know you're not going to be able to contain Dozier forever, but a flag is down at the Penn State 43-yard line. Dozier has not had a 100-yard game this year, and a lot of people who don't watch the ball games are going to say, well, he's having a down year. He's not. He's picking up so many yards as a pass receiver. And here's the call. Personal foul against Penn State. Well, you're right, Mike. Uh, DJ, D let's see if we can uh, pick it up here on the replay. It's uncharacteristic of uh, Penn State. They've had so many penalties already in this game. Oh, they called Cyberling right there with a leg whip. He threw a block, and the guy got away from him, the linebacker. This is illegal. He's going to come here. Now, this is fine. Right here. Watch him whip with the legs. That is a penalty. They once called that on Chris Barr, the, the kicker for the Bengals. And he was <laughs> proud that they called a penalty on him, but you cannot leg whip. It means he hit somebody, right? <laughs> when you're six foot seven, too, you can cover him. He could have hit three or four people on that play. The ball marked at the 37. The scoreboard still shows first and 10. And now they say we had offsetting penalties on the play, so they'll just replay first down. Smith. Got two, maybe three. And the interior of that West Virginia defense has done a good job, especially freshman Darnell Warren, number 54, in on another tackle. He's out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania, 6 feet, 236. He's tied for number three on the team in tackles. That's 57 this year. Well, they think uh, the coaches believe he could be the finest player to ever play defense at West Virginia. He's only freshman, very big, very strong, and very smart. Only freshman. He's the best player to ever play defense. He better not meet Sam Huff in the parking lot. <laughs> Sam will want to talk to him about that. Second and seven. Schaefer to throw again. Again with time. Now here comes the pressure. Dumps it. Complete to Dozier. Dozier to the 24-yard line. Warren again in on the tackle. It's going to be another first down for the Nittany Lions. Also in on the stop was Matt Smith playing the inside linebacker this week. Well, John Schaefer's really showing what he does best. He's, he's really able to sit in a pocket and takes his time. Of course, the line's doing an excellent job. Now, here's Dozier right in the middle of your screen. Watch him read. He'll come across, which a good receiver will do. It comes right with the quarterback, and look at that throw. He finds an opening in the zone, and he hits it. That's John Schaefer. Pretty good coverage on that play, too. Uh, two linebackers who saw it coming just couldn't get there a step late. First and ten, Nittany Lions. They'll split the backs this time. Give it to Dozier. Tries to get outside. Cuts it back. 20, 19-yard line. Travis Curtis and Stacy Smith on the stop for West Virginia. Penn State just dominating here in the first quarter. But they have done it again, Pat, on the strength of the passing game. The runs, West Virginia's done a good job against. Well, they really are controlling the line of scrimmage against the run, but that's hurting their pass rush. I think they're so concerned about uh, taking the men on and, and the running game that they're not getting enough pressure on uh, Schaefer right now. The thing about D.J. Dozier, they wanted him to make him a receiver, and you look at his statistics this year, he comes in as a running back, he's averaging 4'6", but he's averaging 12'5 as a receiver. No wonder they want to get him the ball. Second down, four yards to go. The Nittany Lions leading 7-0 and threatening. Here comes the end around again. It's Roundtree. They've got it diagnosed this time, and Roundtree belted out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Sometimes you can only go to the well once. Let's check in with Larry Burnett for the scoreboard update. Larry? Our statistician Chuck Freeby very happy about that. Another Dane graduate, third and two for Penn State. Big play here at the West Virginia 17. And they give it to David Clark. And Clark did not make first down yardage. Darnell Warren in on the stop again. And Massimo Maka as Joe Paterno wastes no time at all in deciding on the field goal. Maka number 10 will come on. Had a good game last week, as you see, three out of three after uh, suffering a little bit earlier this year. In his career, 32 out of 48. This will be a 34-yard attempt. So at uh, three out of nine streak, he's almost been automatic. That's what he was before this season. Sure. 34-yarder. Hooked it. And it's no good. And that brings the Mountaineer fans to their feet here in Morgantown at Virginia nothing as Manka misses a chip shot field goal. Well, you've ever won. Timko, play action fake. Throws incomplete, was trying to hit Smith. 
or rather was trying to hit uh, Gary Basil his tight end Johnson on the coverage but Timko just under threw him well, coach Neal has been concerned uh, Timko just hasn't been throwing the ball well he just turning it down and he's bouncing the ball all the time as you can see his fingers just rolled over the ball instead of a nice smooth spiral he cannot throw the ball that way. Uh, Coach Nealon said that he's going to have a lot of three and five set drops. Nice short passes to build some confidence, but that's not the way to build it, to bounce the first one. Tim Coe well under 50%. Hollifield trying to get outside. Great defense coming up from the corner. Eddie Johnson, number 39. Johnson was the guy who made the tackle on the last series when they tried to get outside. He forces the run very well. Well, you just don't run delays very well against this Penn State team. As, as I said earlier, they're very quick, they're very intelligent, and they just cover laterally so well. You've got to either run traps or draws up the gut, try to split a hole very quickly, or throw short, concise passes. He's not going to run laterally on them. Going to be third down and 16 for the Mountaineers. Dangerous play against Penn State deep in your own territory. Timko under the blitz. And the tackle by Don Graham, the linebacker, comes on the blitz, and Timko didn't have a chance. Well, Don Graham is actually uh, leading the team in sacks with five. He's tied with uh, Shane Conlon. As you can tell, the linebackers make the sacks on this team. And he just got in there clean on that play. Lance Carrion will have to punt it away from his own end zone, and Coates is waiting at midfield. Carry on, low line drive. Coach with a big chance to return it. 40, 35, inside the 35 to about the 33. A 36 yard punt that had a hang time of about a second and a half. And Penn State will have great field position when we come back. It'll only happen if Tim Coe gets hurt. Penn State after the short punt and a good return. First and 10 at the West Virginia 33. Draw play goes to Blair Thomas. And Thomas is dragged down by Matt Smith. Thomas in there at tailback, a sophomore who played so well a week ago against Alabama. Tim Manoa, number 44, is in at fullback. And with Smith and Manoa alternating at fullback, you don't see any drop-off in quality. Well, they're Thomas both, either. Yeah, that's right. They're both ex all of these backs are very fast. And the, what I like best about the Penn State backs is they all block, and they can all catch, and they can run also. Last two series, they've thrown the ball a lot. You think they've set up the run by now? I think they've got to start going wide now with their sweeps. Manoa and Thomas, the backs in the eye. Thomas. Cuts it back. Hit from behind and dumped at the West Virginia 21 yard line. And the tackle was made by David Grant, uh, the middle guard, and Larry Holly also. Well, think about the Penn State. The Penn State linemen are very good because they'll pick up the backers here, you'll see. They stick with their blocks, they stay with it, and then the backs, see, so notice, the back tackle's just staying with his man, the back cuts right behind it. That's why they run so well. Their linemen aren't huge, but they stay with their blocks, and their running backs find the holes. First and ten, Nittany Lions. The seventh first down of the first quarter. Thomas. Slipped one tackle and gets to the 18-yard line. Pick up of about four. What make the last two plays really illustrated why it's so tough to it's very tough to stop this team because watch the tight end he'll he'll take the outside right here he's going to give the back enough to, room to cut inside this is actually an inside play then he'll cut back outside stayed with his block that was an excellent play to get off the block but the hole was there and it's an easy five yard gain for him it could have been bigger if he had made such an outstanding individual effort rodney wilson fought off the block at 17 yards on three carries for thomas and it's second and five penn state driving leading seven nothing manoa Get a couple and fights forward. A tackle again by Darnell Warren, number 54. And there is Joe Paterno closing in on uh, 200 victories for his career. He's already tied for 12th all time at 194. 194 wins, 44 losses, and two ties. Uh, but they win them most in the East. You know, most of their games <laughs> yeah. are in the East. And then they go down to Alabama, play them in Tuscaloosa, and beat them by 20. Paterno can play with anybody. Third and a yard. Schaefer, option. No! Stopped by Robert Pickett, number 45, another one of those sophomore linebackers. And Schaefer, I don't think quite the quarterback you'd want to run that option uh, to live, make a living off of. It looked like he wanted to hand it to the fullback. The yeah. fullback didn't want it. He didn't know what to do when he had it. He didn't know who to pitch it to. But that's a nice play. 
They made a couple nice third down plays there and forced field goal attempts. Maka, who missed a 34-yarder, hooked it wide left, will now come on and try a 32-yarder. And he is under 50% for the season. Good snap and a good hole. He hooked it again. No good. And the West Virginia crowd has been able to cheer really about the first defensive stand and two missed field goals. Penn State is managing to keep the Mountaineers in the ball game as we've come to the end of the quarter. Nightmare time. It might take one. Tally in motion, end around. Fumble the ball, got it back. And you can believe Penn State is very aware of John Talley, last year's quarterback, now playing a flanker or an H-back position, if you will. He can run, he can throw, he can catch, he can do everything. First quarter statistics, look at this. 161 to two. And now West Virginia is in minus territory. They lost six on that play, so total offense for the ball game. West Virginia is minus four yards. But they're only minus seven on the scoreboard. They're very fortunate That's right. at this point. Second down and 16. Timko's gonna have to throw the ball. Wants the short drop, forced out of the pocket. Can't find anyone, and he's dumped out of bounds at the 11-yard line. The pressure that time by Pete Kirkendall, number 73, and Timko simply couldn't find anybody to throw to. Well, actually, Mike, he had some people open. He, he drops back here, and he has, he has people open, but he's just a little conservative right now. He's not real confident. You have to throw those tight passes like Schaefer did earlier, and here comes Kirkendall. He's gonna run him down. Now, this left hand will come right across, right there. Now, that's questionable. Right there, he's ripping his head off. That's, uh, that could have been a penalty. That left arm should not go across the head like that. Not questionable to Timko, it hurt. Yeah, you're darn right. But again, it's a confidence factor. He's got to let that ball go when he's got receivers. Third and 18. Timko, deep sideline, got a man open, almost intercepted. Duffy Cobbs had it in his hands and couldn't hold it. They were throwing for Calvin Phillips, number 82, and Cobbs timed it perfectly and then dropped the ball. Timko just didn't get it there in time. Cobbs is right in the bottom part of your screen. He's really one of the better cover guys in the country. Another one of those underrated Penn State talents. Watch him take that ball right away. He wasn't scared of getting beat deep, and he should have had that ball intercepted. Carrion will have to punt from his end zone again. This time he gets off a good kick, or a better kick at least. Coach at his own 49. Good cut into West Virginia territory to the 40-yard line. A 39-yard kick, an 11-yard return, and once again, Penn State will have great field position to start with leading 7-0 here in the second quarter playing Morgantown. Got a big NASCAR race coming your way tomorrow at noon. The Atlanta Journal 500. Darrell Walter back for his fourth Winston Cup championship. The battle for this year's point title continues. Dale Earnhardt currently third in the standings with 4,108, followed by Walter. Schaefer back to throw, deep sideline, incomplete. Try to hit Thomas out of the backfield. Good coverage that time by Stacy Smith. Schaefer five out of seven, 97 yards and a touchdown here in the first half. Joe Paterno going with his uh, second backfield. That's Manoa, 44 in front of Schaefer, and Thomas, 32, the tailback. He can afford to rest Dozier and Smith right now. Of course, he can afford to rest them any time because Thomas and Manoa can play. Second and ten. Hamilton in motion. Thomas. Big hole off tackle. Close to first down territory and then gang tackled by West Virginia at the 32. Well, this is Penn State just running the ball. You're going to see a nice block by Cyberling right here. The double team on the tackle. Now watch, he's going to rub off. It takes the backer out of the way, too, and he stays with it. And what you could see there, an excellent block by Tim Manoa. And then Cyberling, again, stayed with his block and cut him at the end. Third very and feisty, three. Very feisty on that offensive line for Penn State. West Virginia can't expect him to keep missing field goals. They've got to stop him on defense. Thomas. Flag is down as Thomas got the first down. He got to the 29-yard line. Warren, the first man on the tackle, will check the flag for you. I thought one of the West Virginia players was lined up offside. The near side linebacker. How about you, Michael? I'll tell you, when you're on well, the sidelines, when you're on the sidelines as a player, you see those defensive guys lined up. 
offsides all the, all time. the time. And you're screaming at the referees, and they always ignore you. For once they called it, somebody's happy on the Penn State side. It's not Don Nealon. Last thing he needs is mistakes. His team has made so many of them through the first seven games. So it's an automatic first down for Penn State. There's D.J. Dozier. Doesn't appear to be hurt at all. I think uh, Joe Paterno just alternating backs. Why not? You got that kind of talent. Let him play. 13 minutes even to go. First half of play from sold out Mountaineer Field. Schaefer to throw. Plenty of time as a man wide open and he missed it. Had Thomas wide open. Oh, there wasn't anybody close to him. Just an excellent game plan right now by Penn State. A lot of passes on first down. They're moving the ball when they need to. Although West Virginia's played excellent run defense and held them to one touchdown. But this uh, back, again, they run the back out of the backfield. He was wide open. One thing Joe Paterno has always managed to do is we have basketball starting and Houston beats the Lakers. Uh, one thing Paterno has always been able to do is find the weaknesses in other teams and exploit them. You don't win 194 games without doing that. Second and 10. Dozier is back in there, a tailback, and they give it to him on the draw. And West Virginia was waiting. Dozier gets to the 26, maybe the 25-yard line. And Hunt and Grant were in on the tackle for the Mountaineer. Well, Don Nealon didn't turn around this program without being a good coach also. That's right. Cyberling again. And that's why Penn State runs so many. Look at him. Stay with his block. Stay with his block. He's going to get the guy mad. Steps on his oh. neck. And the ref, oh, now he shakes his hand and says, I'm sorry I stepped on your neck. That's Larry Holly. When, when you step on someone who's six foot seven's neck, you either got to be able to high kick your leg very high or get him on the ground. You better be standing beside the official so he doesn't turn around and knock you flat. 12 18 to go in the half. It's a seven point game. They did the ball game. They have a touchdown, but they have missed two field goal attempts 34 and 32 yards. And they're in scoring territory again. Well, this is where the running backs are so tough out of the backfield. He'll look at the wide receivers first, and he goes to the tailback. Schaefer play action. Or the tight end. Under pressure, throws, knocked away. And it was the All-American candidate, Matt Smith, the linebacker, who got back to knock it down. It will force Penn State to go for the field goal again. Number 50 did the job that time. Brian Seiberling was open again, 91 the tight end. Just a nice little rollout. He'll come from the left-hand side of your screen. Again, he's running laterally with Schaefer. Schaefer will set. This is a nice throw. In, the guy's in his face, and they just take it away. Had that been a little higher, touchdown to Cyberling. But again, he had a guy right in his face. Pretty good throw. Monka has missed from 32 and 34. This one will be from 42. And the pressure mounts on it. He got this one. Massimo Monka, 42 yards out. And after missing two straight. The senior from Reno, Nevada, knocks it through, and Penn State has taken a 10-0 lead on West Virginia. He's the only member of the Penn State sideline that doesn't hope for 60-point blowouts every week. He's got to do push-ups. Well, let's be fair to the field goal kicker, Manka, here. And this is what drives coaches crazy. Now, look, his left foot, he's missed two already, and that looks like it's in front of the ball to me, too, and yet he had a perfect kick, and that's why I'm not coaching special teams. I'm up here in the booth, <laughs> and my apologies, Tim. I guess I don't know his techniques. You never know with field goal kickers. The crowd hanging in there in a facility we got a great tour of yesterday from head coach Don Nealon. They built this stadium, completed it in 1980. They have expanded it twice since, and it now seats 63-5. And what a great place for college football. Oh, he's done a heck of a job here. Beautiful facilities. We saw that film room. It's better than any I've ever seen in the NFL. Yep. 70 seats for the players to watch the films. It's absolutely magnificent. Monka will kick off. Deep to receive for West Virginia, Darren Fulton. He'll have a chance to run this one back from the three. Across the 20, driven out of bounds, 23-yard line after an 18-yard return. Let's check in with Larry Burnett. He's got a scoreboard update. They are at half. Last kick. West Virginia is going to be pushed back, trailing 10 to nothing. He's got a clip or a hold on the kickoff, and there you see Don Nealon. And it looks like he is talking with Ben Reed, the young man who did not start tonight because he was injured a week ago. There's the scoring drive. Ended in a 42-yard field goal by Monka. Tim Coe comes back into the ball game for West Virginia at quarterback.
Timko leads him out as West Virginia has to start from its own 11 with 12.03 to go in the half. Pecan, the remaining running back, as Hollifield is on the wing, and Pecan runs into the quarterback and gets only about a yard, and offensive coordinators hate to see something like that as Tim Johnson makes the stop. Tends to cut down your momentum when you run into the guy's handing you the ball. That's not the optimum way to uh, progress down the field toward the other goal line. And again, West Virginia's in terrible field position. They haven't been able to punt the ball out after they haven't moved the ball. They've got to pick up some first downs. West Virginia, before that play, has lost six yards on the ground and has nothing past Timco. Forced out of the pocket. He's got some room to run if he wants. Instead, throws and overthrows Calvin Phillips. And the crowd is going to get on Mike Timco. He had a lot of room that time. Could have run if he wanted to. Tim Brando has an injury report for us from the sideline. Timmy? West Virginia's getting in their share of licks. Jim Coates got dinged. They checked him, gave him some smelling sauce. And, you know, I'm watching this game, Mike and Pat, and it reminds me a great deal of the B.C. Penn State game. Remember how Penn State really had control of the game yet didn't score many points and then all of a sudden in comes Sean Halloran and all of a sudden BC made it a game in the third quarter it reminds me a bit of that one You're me right. too Tim it really does Maka missed his first two field goals there I believe too Charles. West Virginia third and nine they have not converted a third down yet Tim Coat dumps it off and it was a bad pass behind his receiver trying to throw for Hollifield coming out of the backfield and Russo and Graham were putting on the pressure. They sandwiched Timco, and the dissatisfied fans are starting to show up a little bit more in force. One big difference, Timmy B, uh, between this team is they don't have a Halloran on the, on the bench. You know, Reed is hurt. If he could come in and fire the team up. But right now, really all they have is Timco. They don't want to play their freshman quarterbacks who want to redshirt them, so they're in trouble offensively. He is 0 for 4 passing. Carry on the punt. Coach deep. Carry on unloaded on this one. Coach has to go back to his own 38. He's got room up the near side. And then West Virginia pursues and cuts him off as he gets across midfield. A 50-yard kick, a 14-yard return, and once again, Penn State will be starting its offense in West Virginia territory. Our score here in Morgantown, West Virginia, second quarter. Penn State 10, West Virginia nothing. The Nitton Lions have it at the Mountaineer 48. They have had great field position the last three drives to West Virginia 33, the 41 and out of 48. Michigan State, Minnesota, keep you up to date on as many scores as possible. Dozier back in a tailback. Hamilton in motion. Dozier on the delay. Dozier hit first by David Grant, the 280-pound middle guard, and then he got a lot of help from his friends. People wonder why uh, someone like DJ Dozier doesn't put up the big statistics. Well, he hasn't played for almost a quarter now. They play the second right. teamers. They rest him. He's a team player, and uh, you know Paterno doesn't care about stars. He cares about victories. That's right, and I think Dozier's the same way. Uh, he, he doesn't said, care about the stats. He wants he wants the wins. His goal is to be the best blocking back they've ever had, not just receiver and runner. Give him a loss of a yard on that one at second and 11. Manoa. Got room outside. Dozier in front of him. And Manoa, very close to the first down. Larry Holly pushed him out of bounds. You can block if you get your fullback outside. Well, that, that illustrates, uh, Don Nealon was telling us, the West Virginia coach, that these fullbacks, Smith and Manoa, are so fast, it's so unusual to send your fullback around the end like that, but they both run four sixes, and I don't like to run 40-yard uh, times into the ground, but that's very unusual for two fullbacks to be that fast. Right. Manoa calls Pittsburgh home, but he was born in Tonga. Be a nice recruiting trip. <laughs> he could find <laughs> that Joe gets a tan. I guess. First, <laughs> that's right. Schaefer to throw. Plenty of time. Now he's in trouble. And they got him. And it's Hunt with the sack. West Virginia fans have got to root for Brad Hunt because he is number 70, probably the most famous number in West Virginia football history. That was Sam Hoff's number. We thought Sam would be here tonight, wanted to say hello, but he does uh, Washington Redskins football on radio. A lot of times he can't get here. Second sack for West Virginia. And you can see, this is at the tail end of this play. 42 is right in the middle of your screen. They're dropping way back in the zone. If Hunt hadn't taken that pass away, it would have been another completion. Second and 18. Here comes the blitz. Schaefer with time. Throws complete to Roundtree. Ray Roundtree staying on his feet, and everybody got a shot at him. And flags go down. And the crowd does not like the call. 
for the old days of the tearaway jersey, he'd still be running. Yeah. Pickett, or Lockwood just held on. Personal foul. Late hit, I think it was uh, Holly. Came in late, but it's so difficult for a defender to stop. I mean, Roundtree just wouldn't go down. And they'll mark off 15 yards. It would have brought up third and about 11. So the second big penalty against West Virginia here in the first half. Ten first downs for Penn State. Three have come by penalty. That's a shame because that was a great effort by both Lockwood, who took uh, Roundtree one-on-one -on -one and made that tackle. He kept holding on to his shirt, and Roundtree kept trying to make the first down. And ultimately, the penalty beat them both. First down, Penn State, West Virginia, 23. This is Thomas. He's got a couple of great blocks. Hunt stopped him as he got to the 18. West Virginia is so young. Sophomores, freshmen, juniors on defense and offense. Next year or two, nobody's going to want to come in here and play these guys. See the clock turning down under nine minutes. It is only 10-0 Penn State, although they have totally dominated. And here, look at these backs. Five backs, and they all average more than four yards a carry. Thomas, a gaudy 9.7. Second and six. Delay to Thomas. Hit and flattened that time. And it was number 54, Darnell Warren, who played a whale of a game on defense. This kid's a freshman. When you play this many young people, Pat, they're going to make mistakes. And they'll also make big plays. And that's yep. the problem. That's why they've lost so many games this year. They're outstanding one play. They get burnt the next. And, you know, Darnell Warren, I, I read one of the most interesting quotes ever. They say in the press book that he's a very intelligent player with a professional body. I need to find <laughs> that one for me. Third and eight. Schaefer with time. Throws deep for the end zone. Knocked away. Excellent defensive play by Willie Edwards, number 47. He got there in time. Save the touchdown. Oh, Sophomore from Morgantown. It's actually an excellent throw by John Schaefer. He has a receiver wide open. But Edwards is going to close the gap, as good defensive backs do, and he almost picked it off. For a second there, Roundtree was wide open. He really this beat him. He faked the post and went to the sure corner, did. but he recovered. And I think Joe Paterno, the first thing he said to John Schaefer is, you've got to throw the ball earlier. As Pat said, he was open. And then Edwards closed. So Monka will now come on to drive from 37. He is one out of three tonight. And this one looks right down the pipe. Massimo Monka, two out of four field goal attempts. And Penn State builds the lead over West Virginia. 13-0 with 7.59 to go in the first half. I think the bag may be empty. Tim Coe, the starting place of the injured Ben Reed, is 0 for 4. Darren Fulton at the goal line, maybe a yard deep. Got to the 22-yard line, and West Virginia will start from there. And it was Brendan Gartner, a defensive back, down to make the tackle. And take a look at the yardage in the first half. Penn State with 183, West Virginia minus five. You don't win too many ball games when you're minus five yards with 7.55 to go in the half. 13 plays, minus five yards. Yeah. And you'd think with that kind of offense in Penn State's domination, they could be down 35 nothing already, but they're still in the ball game. Tim Coe at quarterback. Try to give it to Hollifield. And Hollifield gets back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. Trey Bauer, number 35, Shane Conlon, number 31. Conlon had the initial hit. Mike, I think they're going to have to stop running laterally. Uh, they're going to have to get some quick traps. They're going to have to run some dives and just hope that their big tackles can move out Penn State's men. The problem is that I think uh, Mike Russo, the nose guard's dominating the center. He's giving the linebackers plenty, plenty of shots at the ball carriers and putting pressure on the quarterback. If you can't stop the nose guard, you're not going to uh, dominate this defense at this pace. Hollifield, four carries, only seven yards. He likes to go outside. They'll fake the delay to him. Tim Coe looking for his first completion, throws, and gets it. And the official will rule the receiver down at the 24-yard line. That's Keith Wynn. It didn't look like his knee went anywhere close to the ground. But I did not have a good angle. Uh, they definitely looked down to me. And this is two straight weeks we've seen this. Uh, yeah. Receivers in college, that's just a terrible habit. You can't go down to and put your knee on the ground when you catch a ball. 
this was not that bad a throw. He's going to really get hit. This is why he was, was, uh, hadn't completed a pass. He had people all over him all night right there. Oh, yeah. Definitely on the ground. You're right. Well, I'm wrong again. I'm getting used to long it. Long life of a quarterback. Now, watch this. Boy, you don't last long. You keep getting hit from the blind side like that. First pass completion for Timko. Only three yards in the third and 70. Dumps it off and throws it short. Hollowfield coming out of the backfield. Really didn't have a chance to catch it and do anything with it. This is unbelievable. And this is exactly what Coach Nealon said. For some reason, Timko he played great, as you said, at the end of last year, beginning he of this did. year. He won five games. Now he's throwing the ball. The point's just going right into the yep. ground, even on the five-yard passes. And you'd have to think, even if Ben Reed can't throw the ball very well, they might have to go to it. Why not go to one of those freshman quarterbacks? Now well, they want a red shirt both of them. They came after Carrion, and Carrion is flattened. I don't know if they threw a flag or not, but Carrion got dumped. And the ball goes down to the 30-yard line, and he yeah. was laying on the flag. It will be a roughing the kicker penalty, it looks like, and it may have been Don Graham, the man who got it. Well, really, the only time this crowd's been able to applaud are missed field goals and penalties. That's right. This is... <laughs> You don't like this. This is a, as a punter. This is not what you uh, live for. Right into your leg. Very vulnerable there. Oh yeah. And for once, that was not a fake penalty. He no. got leveled. Very fortunate, actually, that he didn't catch his foot there and hurt it. That's West Virginia's biggest play of the ball game. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. First down. It was Don Graham, number 53, who came within about six inches of blocking it. Well, let's watch Mike Timko's throwing motion here. Again, he's very short. They say he's 6'2", but he's really closer to 5'11". But again, pressure in your face makes it very difficult to throw, but you can see that he's got an angle on the ball where he's spinning it toward the ground as opposed to letting it fly. Russo got a hand in his face, too. West Virginia, its own quarter. Timko to throw. Short drop, can't find anybody. Now he throws again, throws low, but this time complete to Gary Basil, the sophomore out of Vienna, Virginia. Well, one thing is a receiver, you don't have to worry about getting hung up. You get no. hit when you're in the air. Those guys are diving for every single pass. Again, we mentioned that uh, nose guard, Mike Russo. They got three, four guys on him now, and that's why Penn State plays so well. They got four guys on one guy. Where do the other? They're going to get some pressure on a quarterback. He is very strong and very quick, very underrated also. Gain of seven, second and three. Smith in motion. They'll get it to Hollyfield. Wants to go outside. Driven out of bounds shy of the 50, which is where he needed to go for the first down. Now the official will mark him at the 50, and it looks like it is a first down for West Virginia. Got a scoreboard update for you. Let's go back to the studio. Big cheer here in Morgantown as the Mountaineers have a first down, and for the first time, they are in Penn State territory. The ball just nosed across midfield. Hollyfield in motion, and now the tight end. Keith Wynn jumps off sides. Well, they'll be on the other side of the half, 50-yard line now. Yeah. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense. So it'll be first and 15. Let's see if we can figure out why he jumped off sides. Kevin Koch in the center. Oh, yeah, see a little flinch there, and the tight end saw that. Actually, the uh, referee should have called that a penalty on the center be penalized one way or another, right? You're not happy as a tight end when your own center fakes you out. And how could Mike Russo not have jumped offside? That's if right. I saw a ball four inches away from me move like that, I'd jump. First and 15, Mountaineers. They are still in this ball game, even though Penn State has been completely dominant. It's 13-0. Tim Coe again can't find anybody. Now he throws back across the green. Incomplete, or is it a fumble? Ruled incomplete. And that ball should have been caught right in the hands of Harvey Smith. Marcus Henderson and Shane Conlon back on defense, but Tim Coe had to scramble, laid that one in there. Oh, this was an excellent throw. Harvey Smith definitely should have caught this ball. Right here in the middle of your screen, as you can see, nobody wide, he's up. He's so concerned about waving to the quarterback, he forgets to catch the ball. And who was the first guy to hit him? His first cousin, Marcus Henderson. Oh, that's great. I know you were dying something like that would happen yes. if you could use it. I'm sure Smith wasn't looking forward to it because Henderson's a hitter. Second and 15, West Virginia. Bell is the man in motion. Penn State coming on the blitz. They go with a draw to Hollowfield, and he couldn't break it. 
one more step. Hollifield might break a big one against the Blitz. Tim Brando has more on the sideline. Tim? I tell you, down here, you got some people from the mines, and I've got Matt Zervis right now, who is the Mountaineer, and he is decked out with his gunpowder, his 45 caliber musket, his coonskin cap, his knife. Matt, what do you do to get these people really excited? Well, let me show you what I do. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I think, uh, I think I'm ready to go back into the mines, Mike and Pat. <laughs> That's great. Mountaineer's been a tradition here for a long time, Tim, and he does get them fired up right now. They need a big play on third and 17. Another blitz. He's got a man open at Smith. He's got the ball at the Penn State 37-yard line. It'll be a first down, West Virginia. Beautiful catch. 19-yard gain, and Smith makes up for the last one that he dropped. The Penn State dropped on uh, the gamble. They went with the blitz right in the middle of your screen, both middle backers, so it's going to be man-to-man -man coverage with a free safety helping him, but he got rid of the ball. When you get rid of the ball against the blitz, you're going to have wide receivers open. That's just an excellent catch right off the ground again, though. They've been trying to go with the short drops. It's really the first time that Tim has made the short drop and unloaded the ball instead of waiting. First and ten. Smith, the man in motion. Hollowfield got some room. Hollifield to the 31-yard line. He can get outside. The young man can run. Well, I think you made a good point just a second ago. Uh, Tim yep. Cole, when you're playing, yes, you did, uh, Coach <laughs> Patrick. No, when you're playing a team such as Penn State, so many gambles that, you know, very conservative with their secondary, but they blitz a lot with their backers, and their front three are so good, you've got to get rid of the ball on time. You just can't, you can't hesitate. On that throw, he, he saw a zone, he threw it right into it, and the receiver dove and caught it. Six That's yards, all confidence. Six yards for Hollifield, the senior out of Romulus, Michigan, and it's second and four. Hollifield again following Peacock. And he gets down to the 26-yard line. A penalty flag is down at that point, and we'll check the flag for you. Harvey Smith was out there blocking for him. We'll see if that's involved in And Don yeah. Nealon really upset. They'll call a clip. I think Harvey Smith did clip him. He came back. Awfully difficult block for wide receiver. Of course, I didn't make any very many in my life, so I really don't know the feeling. But many? in this case, well, okay, any. Let's watch Bauer right here. 50, 35, who some people feel is as good as Shane Conlon. Great lateral pursuit right here. We can't see the penalty, but that's an excellent play. Causes a fumble. So the clip will take them back to the 43-yard line, and it's second and 16, and Don Nealon was just so upset. Finally seen his offense doing something, and then they hurt themselves with a penalty. That's six penalties, 60 yards against them out here. You don't need to do Penn State any favor. Uh -huh. Blitz. Wide open again. And Tim Coe throws behind Smith. Smith said he caught it, but it obviously hit the ground. And Timko had him open. He pulled it down again, Mike. Yep. He had the three-step drop. He should have delivered that ball. Then he took a stutter step left, and he threw it behind him. He was wide open. It's got to be frustrating, uh, Coach Nealon. He's called a couple excellent plays right here. Again, he's just, I mean, there's no pressure here. That's just a poor throw. Wide open. That could have been a touchdown right there on a good throw. You know, Coach Nealon, uh, he, Don's made some good calls. He, earlier, they blitzed. He called a draw play. Yeah. One step away from big play to tackle, and now he's had the blitz, and they have to convert it. One thing you noticed on that play is Tim Coe didn't have any body in it at all. It was just arm, and it's third and long. Three-man rush this time. Got to unload, and they sacked him at the 48-yard line. They came with a three-man rush. Bob White was the man who got him. They dropped eight on coverage. And Tim Coe still couldn't find anybody open, even with a three-man rush and pretty decent protection. Oh, just overpowering, though. Those three guys just got in there and put pressure on him immediately. He danced around, danced around, but eventually they're going to catch up to you. Yeah. So West Virginia will have to punt it away with 2.18 in the clock running. Carrion, whose brother was a punter here, the late 70s, tries to hang it high. Coach comes up. He'll let it go, and it takes a West Virginia bounce. It'll go inside the five to the four, maybe the three-yard line. A 45-yard kick as Mike Timko talks with the coaches upstairs. 2:01 left in the half. It's 13-nothing. 
2-0-1 to go in the first half, and Penn State pinned back at its own four-yard line. And, Pat, let's give some credit to Don Nealon, who's come in with a great game plan. He's doing the things he has to do to stay in this ballgame. Well, if you don't stop the running game of Penn State, Paterno will never call a pass. They're doing the right thing. They've got to control that line of scrimmage, hope for some big plays. Dozier and Manoa are the running backs. They split them, and we'll see if Penn State stays conservative down here. Manoa tries to get outside. Got all the way out to the 10-yard line. The clock will continue to run, and he just ran over somebody. Notre Dame laying it on the Naval Academy. 31-0. That's a third quarter score. Minnesota over Michigan State, second quarter. Louisiana Tech over Lamar. Tulane leading Southwest Louisiana. That is in the first quarter. How come they never put the Harvard scores up there anyway? I'd give you a silly answer, but I'll just, I'll just let it go. Because everybody's in the library and couldn't see it. <laughs> Second down, Manoa. He'll try to go outside on the right this time. Hit and drop, Darnell Warren, number 54. Again, the first man on the tackle. Very close to the first down for the Nittany Lions. As you catch an update on uh, scores and upcoming events. Clock running with a minute three. Now it's stopped. It looks like we're going to go into halftime with a 13-0 lead. And really, uh, the, the so-called experts uh, favoring Penn State by uh, three touchdowns coming into this game. A lot of people thought that would, had to be a conservative estimate <laughs> because West Virginia has not been able to score. And traditionally, this series has not come close to what people predicted. Even when West Virginia had better teams, Penn State found a way to blow them out. Well, they find a way to beat everybody in the East and uh, everywhere else. But you're right. I think right now, West Virginia is not in bad shape. If they can hold them here, make them punt, they move the ball for the first time. So they'll take some momentum in yep. the locker room. And 13 nothing. you know, if they can score, get in uh, this crowd behind the play. But again, the only way to beat Penn State is to, to stop that running game. This is third, get a pick. third and a yard. West Virginia would like to stop them and force a punt with a minute three to go. Short yardage. Offense and defense. Quarterback sneak, Schaefer. And it looks like he got the first down. He just went in behind Radisic, his 260-pound senior center. And uh, Morgan came in the guard, left guard, double team Parker. And as a nose guard, you don't stand much of a chance with two people that quality. Ball. And a personal foul against West Virginia and a couple of the Mountaineer defenders really upset about the call. Did not see what might have precipitated that flag or what made it happen. Yes. You know it was raining when it's you that, said that. It's that Harvard humor. Sometimes it goes right by me. Dead ball, personal foul, defense, first down. Son, don't grind him in the ground. And you heard the official say to Darnell Warren, son, don't grind him in the ground. <laughs> Thought that was the name of the game. It's tough to do an AstroTurf, though. Can't, yeah. get, can't bury him very deep in this turf. Balls at the 30. It's first and 10. Clock running, 45 seconds to go. Let's see if Penn State wants to go up top once. They'll go with a draw to Dozier, which sometimes is just as good. Dozier stays on his feet to the 37-yard line. And now Darnell Warren hops up in front of the official. He thought he got hit late on that one. Penn State in uh, no interest to stop the clock. It's 26 seconds, but they will go with no huddle. Dozier, 15 yards on six carries. And now Schaefer wants to throw, wants a screen. Dozier, he dropped it. Oh, he had some room to run if he catches that football. They set that play up great. What a great call on a hurry-up offense. Well, you have a player like uh, Dozier, you're right. That's just as good as going up top a lot of times. They set that screen up beautifully at two people in front of him. It's just a little bit high over his head. 17 seconds left. It's now third and four. Boy, Dozier looks like he may have been injured. Now, let's watch DJ on this play. He's improved so much as a receiver. And they have total confidence in his hands, but in that case, I think it was he looked where he was going to run, which you've heard before, but it was a high, tough catch. And in that case, you better catch it first, then worry about where you're going to cut. Third and four, 17 seconds to go in the half. Schaefer delayed to Thomas. Thomas, very close to the first down. I think he got it. Thomas, the ball. See the clock stopped with nine seconds left. 
And now Penn State is really out in the kind of a field position where they could go for the bomb without uh, too much worry. Not pinned deep in their own territory. I would say probably Schaefer saying, let's go deep. The quarterback, <laughs> yeah. I know as a player, and, and Paternal saying, well, you know, what if they intercept it? What do I care? Then I could probably return it for a touchdown. But I really, I hate to be conservative, but I really don't think this is the optimum spot to try to get some points on the board. It's too far to throw it deep. And why, uh, why have a needless turnover? Well, with nine seconds, you would probably have time to pick up uh, 25, 30 yards which would put you within Monka's range if you want to go for another field goal. But I'd have to go with you. I'd go with a little delay or something. I might go with the screen again. Screen. Check the Penn State backfield for you. It's Thomas and Manoa, 32 and 44. You're looking at number 30, Eric Hamilton, who is the flanker back. Very good blocker. Ray Roundtree uh, is the guy they have used on the other side to go deep and Coates not in there right now as he's got two wide receivers over 100 yards first half for Schaefer who just keeps fighting off the criticism of winning football game was he great against Alabama last oh. week must drive him crazy sometimes that people say he's not a good quarterback that's right nine seconds left first and ten from the 41 and Schaefer deep sideline he's got Thomas and he overthrew him Thomas was guarded by the linebacker 45 Robert Pickett and there is a flag down with four seconds to go and it's back where the quarterback was and one of the Penn State players really upset about the call threw down some equipment and it's a personal foul against Penn State and we have had a few and the player who's upset is Keith Radisick the center oh he starts I wouldn't want to make anybody 260 pounds mad. No, you know? definitely not. He must have uh, hit somebody late on that play or something. It's very unusual to have a call like that uh, back in the backfield with uh, the center. Red ball, personal foul, offense, second down. Four personal fouls in this ball game. Three for West Virginia, one for Penn State. Well, I bet you they run the clock out now. I bet they do, too. That Four was an excellent call. Left. We debated it, and they did go to the back, which they've done so effectively. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage and almost dropped it in the zone. Yeah. Four it seconds open. left. Only go with one wide receiver. They're going with their short yardage offense, and Schaefer's just going to kill the clock. Penn State with a 13 to nothing lead will let time run out. The crowd comes to its feet. They seem to be reasonably satisfied that their Mountaineers are still in this ball game. And as you said, Pat, they're going to go into the locker room with a little bit of the momentum, the only momentum they've had in two quarters of football. And they will get the football on the kickoff. If they can drive it down and put it on the scoreboard, they could be back in this game. Our halftime score here in Morgantown, Penn State 13, West Virginia nothing. Let's go back to Larry Burnett in Bristol, Connecticut. We'll see nothing but punt. They didn't move it at all except for the last possession and then a penalty hurt him on that as they finally got into Penn State's territory and had to kick it away. Five punts on five possessions. Penn State's defense is absolutely wicked. And Tim Coe, number 17, is out at quarterback. He had a rugged first half. He'll have Hollifield and Pecan, the running backs in front of him in the eye. Smith the man in motion. Hollifield. Blockers in front of him. But he's running east and west and knocked down at the 24-yard line. Hollifield doesn't seem to want to turn it up, and Penn State strings it out very well. Oh, they are. They're just stringing it out, stringing it out. Really, all he's doing is running time off the clock. Yeah. He's not running north and south, which is the optimum. That's why I, I hate to keep harping on it, but really going in here, talking to Don Nealon, he said he was going to go with at least 10 draws. He was going to try to run traps and, and quick hitters, and they just haven't done it. You just can't run to the sideline. And Pecan, to my knowledge, the fullback, has not carried the ball at all in this ballgame. It is second and eight. Bell is the man in motion. Play action. Timko has it tipped. And it looked like it was Tim Johnson, number 55, the man who got the big hand up there and knocked it down. And Timko looked like he had a man open. Well, you, you know, you mentioned uh, Pecan, the fullback, and he could have been, you know, really important in this game. And I looked through his career statistics, and he started like 18 games, and he's averaged less than 10 yards a game as a fullback. And, you know, it's tough to move the ball that way. Go down to Tim Brando on the sideline. He's got more on uh, the quarterback, uh, Ben Reed. Mike, you were right. They know that Reed's arm is hurting him, and obviously, even though it may have crossed their minds, Reed certainly is a game.
Gamer would like to think that he can play, but it's obvious that Timko is going to uh, be throwing the apple here in the second half. Third and eight. Timko deep downfield and threw behind his receiver. Had him open at the 40-yard line, but he missed number 82, Calvin Phillips. And Timko took a late hit, and he comes up a little slowly. Well, I think that's a good move by Coach Don uh, Nealon not to play Reed. You know, there's a difference between playing hurt and playing smart. And if you're injured, you shouldn't go out there. Don't be a hero because he's going to hurt his throwing motion and perhaps ruin his arm for the rest of the year. I know, but I like heroes. I, I agree with you, but it, it's still uh, it's still great to watch. Carry on punting to coach gets the big bounce. He let it go, and here's a big break for the Mountaineers as Carry on got a gets a roll of a couple of miles. Wow, that's unbelievable. A 61-yard kick. That is a cameraman, and you wonder why we love to come on these trips. <laughs> Timeout, third quarter. Penn State. Schaefer, 6 out of 13, 104 yards, very effective early. D.J. Dozier has been held to 17 yards on six carries. That Dozier, 42. He will be the deep man in the eye behind Smith, number 33. First and 10 from the 15. Dozier on the sweep. West Virginia all over him. He'll lose three on this one. And up from the secondary came Travis Curtis and the big middle guard, David Grant, number 98. But Travis Curtis, the senior who had a separated shoulder before the pit game and was counted as an All-American before the season started and has had all sorts of troubles, makes a big play on that one. When you look back at the Penn State possession, the first time they got the ball, they drove the length of the field for a touchdown. Then they drove again, but missed two consecutive field goals from Massimo Monka. The next two positions, possessions, rather, Monka connected on field goals, and the half ended their last drive. It is second down, 13 yards to go. They'll give it to the fullback. Smith gaping hole up the middle, and Smith gets to the 27-yard line. Stacy Smith finally got a shoulder into him to help on the tackle. But well, they set this play up, Mike, with that sweep again. They're, they are stopping Dozier around the ends, but they can get these fullbacks right up the middle. Again, they're very fast. Radisek, excellent block right in the middle of your field. Right in the middle of the stream. The block is there. Smith did the rest. That's what West Virginia needs to do, those quick openings. Yeah. It's the only way to beat this 5-2. Smith, four carries, 23 yards. Team loaded with talent, and it's senior talent. Very experienced ball club. Almost everybody back from last year when they had such a great season. That is a first down run for Penn State. The Nippy Lions between their own 27 and 28 yard line. They give it to Smith again, and this time West Virginia diagnoses it. The tackle made by Hunt and Pickett. 70 and 45, and look at Hunt. He's trying to fire him up. Don Nealon told us he expected Hunt to play a really fired up ball game. Well, he's six foot two, 282 pounds, and they say he's very quick in addition. Let's watch him play right on the line of scrimmage. Number 70. Takes the blocker on. Nice play. Just threw him right down, and they made the play. West Virginia. Stan crossed. Clayton, he definitely you know, took Stan Clayton to tackle him, threw him away, and made the play. Sure did. Schaefer on second and 10. Again, plenty of time. Throws to the man out of the backfield. Smith has it at the 29. He'll only gain a couple of yards. And Travis Curtis, the strong safety, was right there to make sure he didn't get any more. Schaefer's had all day to throw when he wants to. The two sacks have just been good coverage. That was a good illustration there. Travis Curtis really made a good play. He was up on a, a halfback, very tight on that play. And that's one reason, though, that they got Dozier deep, that they could beat those people short and Make it and go long. They'll get behind those defensive backs. Third and nine. The crowd trying to get in it. And if they do, they could be a factor. Schaefer fakes the draw. The blitz, but he's still got time. Throws. Beautiful and the catch. catch is made by Daryl Giles. What a grab. What a catch. Giles just extended himself over the middle. The key to this play, though, is Schaefer, all kinds of time. He's got a deep crossing route. And Giles is going to make an excellent catch. Actually, his hands are reversed of where they should be right there. Excellent catch. A lot of people put your hands the opposite way, the right hand on top on that play. Usually, you'll have that ground knock the ball loose. That was just a great catch. Keith Radisick, the center, deserves a lot of credit. He picked up the blitzing linebacker, Darnell Warren. And it's a first down, Nittany Lions. Dozier. Great cutback, stays on his feet, then tries to go outside to the West Virginia 47-yard line. On top of him, Pickett and Dave Locke with number 41 along with Bo Orlando's into the ball game for the Mountaineers. Back up to Curtis. Again, when you have a tight end at six foot seven, 260 pounds, 
like Cyberling, you can do a lot of things. There he is, picks it up late. That's one thing about these blockers, again, they stay with him. He missed the, his initial block. Now watch him take the back right out of the way, the defensive back, and the rest is Dozier. Gain of seven, second, and three. Smith just bowled his way forward for the first down at the West Virginia 43. Outstanding effort by Smith. Let's go back to the studio in Bristol for a scoreboard. Thank you very much, Larry. While we have the chance, want to thank our statistician, as always, Chuck Freeby, our spotters tonight, Tom McNeil, Bubba Schmidt, and John Dixon, for the excellent job they have done for us. And just a great place to watch college football, Mountaineer Field in Morgantown. This might be a nice time for a play-action pass. They've thrown a lot of first down when they were effective early in this game. First and 10, 43. This time they'll give it to Clark, who's in the tailback, and Clark gets down to the West Virginia 35, a gain of about eight yards. Pat Marlette, number 95, a 260-pound sophomore. Boy, every time you describe a tackler, he's a freshman or sophomore for West Virginia. That's Clark. He is the uh, third-string tailback, 5'11 and a half, 209, out of Deptford, New Jersey. And the talent just keeps coming, doesn't it? Well, one reason that uh, Penn State only has 13 points is Schaefer, John Schaefer, the quarterback, came out gunning. He was 5 for 6 for 97 yards and a touchdown. I have an injury here. That's Bo Orlando. Another defensive back. He's been hurt the whole year, and he's yeah. an excellent player for him. Yeah, they really uh, had high hopes for him. He was uh, banged up with an ankle injury earlier, and this time it looks like he's just had his bell run over. Well, after that first drive, really, Schaefer's one for seven for only seven yards, and they haven't. They have to be able to complete the passes because West Virginia is doing an excellent job on the line of scrimmage. They are stopping the running game for the most part. It is second down, two yards to go. Penn State with a pretty good drive here so far. Smith up the middle, very close to first down territory, maybe a little bit short. Stopped by the center of the West Virginia defensive line. Mountaineers are really hung in here on defense tonight. Only giving up 13 points. But their offense has been absolutely unable to do a thing against Penn State. Which is very frustrating for a defense. I mean, they're playing their guts out. And all they're doing is trying to keep it close instead of yeah. they don't feel like they're trying to win the game, although they are. It's, it's, it's awfully tough on you mentally. Penn State, four out of eight on third down conversions. It's third and less than a yard here. And they get the first down and more with David Clark. Clark inside the 30. They'll mark it at the West Virginia 28-yard line. Helped up by Smith after Holly made the tackle. This is a good look at uh, Matt Smith. And an injured player for Penn State, number 57, Chris Conlon, the starting right tackle. He's down. Pat, you made a very interesting point at the start of the ball. John Wildhack, we thought he had the night off, but uh, John may have made the trip. Well, uh, you know, he knew when he took his job he'd have some headaches, but I don't think it, he thought it would reshape him. That's uh, head, Excedrin headache number one. Chris Conlon is able to get off the field under his own power. That should bring Stephen Davis, a senior right tackle, into the ball game. You know, going back to Fresno in that game on Thursday night, Sweeney is legitimate. I, I've talked to a number of pro yeah. scouts, and he's going to be a big-time player in the pros. It's a nice opportunity to see a uh, future star. And it is number 76, Stephen Davis, in at right tackle for Penn State on first and 10. The Nittany Lions deep in West Virginia territory again. Schaefer sacked this time, and it's the middle guard, big number 98, David Grant. And there is a flag down. We'll check on the flag. We'll check on some scores for you. Southern Cal leading Arizona. That is in the second period. And on the flag, the referee picked it up after throwing it. Michigan State now back on top of Minnesota. Tulane winning by two at half. TCU, two touchdown lead over Houston, third and fourth. So the play stands, a loss of seven second and 17. And that just about took Monka out of field goal range. Here's the delay to Dozier. Cuts it up the middle, plenty of room. Oh, great And well around Stacy Smith. He's driven out of bounds at the five-yard line. Stacy Smith, number four, is still glued to the spot where he missed the tackle. 
it's impossible to look fast in these uniforms. Granted, yeah. I, I'm telling you, when Kurt Warner came to the pros, no one could believe he could run. This, he just, he can't look pretty. And he just, he just made Stacy Smith out so bad. Wide open, nice blocking again. Now watch this move in the open field. There's a nice cut. Now watch here. Oh, now look at that white uniform. He doesn't look that fast. But they only gonna catch him with a severe angle or he goes in for a touchdown. I think that's the greatest weapon they have. They seduce everybody with those uniforms. They can't believe they're that fast. That's right. That good. Wearing those black high tops. It just looks like you're plodding along. It's first and goal, Penn State. Smith stopped at the line of scrimmage, spins off, gets down near the one yard line. And DJ Dozier has just passed a milestone. He is now number two all time, passing Lydell Mitchell. He has 2,953 yards, and only Kurt Warner lies in front of him. And boy, he's passed some great backs. And he's going to lead the team for the fourth consecutive season as a running back. He's the only really guy rare. ever to do that. Second and goal. The ball at the one. Full house backfield. And they'll give it to Manoa. And they've got Manoa. He may have lost a yard. Stacy Smith, the man who missed the tackle earlier, came up and forced that one along with Matt Smith, number 50. The Smith brothers. The Smith brothers are going to make this tackle. They're not really brothers, but this is two excellent hits to keep him out of the end zone. Stacy stands him up, then Matt puts him on his back. Well, that's good goal line defense. Third and goal now for Penn State. West Virginia, really, realistically, they have to hold here. Down 13-0 tough to give up a touchdown the way their offense has failed to move the ball. And Penn State wants a timeout to talk about it. Radisic still wants to snap the ball. He was up there. He better not. Nobody to get it. 13-0. And the Mountaineers will have to go huddle defensively while Penn State groups around Joe Paterno. There is Don Nealon who passed up uh, a lot of opportunities a couple of years ago to go to uh, just about any other school that had a job opening, Don Nealon was mentioned. I think he made the right decision, though. They, the facilities here are just fantastic. He's yeah. a personal friend of Governor uh, Rockefeller. Yeah. You heard that name. Former governor. Former governor. Uh, let's go to Larry Burnett. We've got a scoreboard up right, uh, update right now. Penn State cheerleaders. A uh, few people made the trip down here from Penn State. West Virginia fans have not had a lot to cheer about tonight, and this is uh, markedly different from 1984 when the Mountaineers beat them, ironically, after having not won against Penn State since 1955. It took a Penn State transfer quarterback, Jeff Hostetler, to pull it off. And they almost beat them the other year Hostetler was the quarterback. Third and goal from the two. Very big series here. Penn State could virtually put it away. It's a mix-up on the play, and Schaefer is dumped at the five-yard line. Somebody went the wrong way. John Schaefer definitely didn't have anyone to pitch the ball to. And Robert Pickett made him pay for it. Well, they were going with the option. I was jokingly uh, telling producer, Terry Linger, I said, I know one thing, they're not going to run. They're not going to run the option. Darn it, they don't call it, which is why it's so tough to defense Penn State. So Monko will come on to try the field goal. Schaefer on that option just looks so slow getting out there. Well, that was a no option because he had no one to pitch. Yeah, nobody to hand You're right. That's not his uh, piece of cake. That's for sure. Monka, chip shot field goal at 22 yards. And he's got it. Third field goal in five tries from Massimo Monka. 6.04 to go third quarter. It's Penn State 16. West Virginia nothing. Hello, I'm Leona, your automatic teller. Can I help you with a student loan? No, a car loan, Leona. Fast forward. Home improvement loan. Hey. It's a General Motors car. Don't get hassled when you finance a new car or truck. Get GMAC financing only at your GM dealer. Uh, is there someone live I could talk with around here? Do we have one of our calendars? This is a fine calendar. We also have what they call a print calendar. If I can only find it. He needs live entertainment. The field goal will kick it off, and that's Darren Fulton, who has not had a lot of success on kick returns tonight. Monka kicks it very, very high and gives that team a chance to get out from the one-yard line. 
Fulton just across the 20 to about the 22. It's remarkable. They've tackled him there inside the 25 almost every time. Yes, they have. Penn 16 plays, and Monka with a 22-yard field goal. They ate up more than half of the third quarter on that drive. And time of possession and time run off the clock now is probably just as important for Penn State as scoring any more points. As Tim Coe comes in to run the offense, he has had a tough, tough night. First and 10, 21. Smith in motion. Oh, wide open tight end. See again. Tim Coe dragging a tackler with him, gets to the 24 yard line. He had two receivers, Mike, who were absolutely sure wide open. I mean, they were waving, and there wasn't anybody within 10 yards. And another thing, going into the game, Coach Nealon said that if they come up in the, to the line of scrimmage, let's watch this replay. Oh, just wide open. He's begging for the ball. I mean, how often do you get a clap, raise your hands, jump up and down? And there was no pressure on the quarterback at that point. He could have thrown it. But before that play, the ball was snapped. Tim Coe came up to the line of scrimmage. There was no one on the wide receiver tally. He was 12 yards back, and they said they were going to take little hitch passes every time that came up. They're not taking it. Tim Coe, 4 out of 12 for 30 yards. There's the three-step drop. Throws out incomplete. Trying to go to his tight end, Keith Wynn. And Wynn was covered. Let's go to uh, Tim Brando. He's got more for us from the sideline. Tim? I don't know about you fellas. I see all these Halloween outfits, but when I was a kid, and of course I still am, <laughs> I wanted to be a football player. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you got to you gotta be a football hero to uh, have cheerleaders uh, around you. And uh, goodness knows I love to have cheerleaders around me, so <laughs> I'll just be a football hero. What do you think? Huh? Uh, I, I'm I, don't even I don't even have pads on and just look at this. I look like a football player or what? I think he did have pads on. <laughs> He'll do anything, won't he? Third and long, blitz. Tim Cole gets rid of it and it's going to be intercepted by Duffy Cobbs. He just threw it away. And Cobbs is knocked down at the 45-yard line. Duffy Cobbs with his fourth interception of the season. Tim Cole threw that one up for grabs and nobody in blue and gold had a chance to catch it. I think you'll see on the, uh, if we see the replay here that he was actually being, he was being hit. He, he got spun around right when he's throwing. Watch this. Just took the momentum of the ball and just floated it downfield, and Cobbs was just waiting for the ball. His fourth interception of the year. As I said earlier, excellent man-to-man -man coverage guy. Very confident. Those corners sit and they wait for throws like that. First Mountaineer turnover, something Don Nealon wanted to avoid that puts Penn State back in the driver's seat at the 45. This is Smith. Breaks it off the right side. Curtis hit it, then he's driven out of bounds by the middle guard, David Grant, who hustled downfield. Tim Coe, it's really hard to understand. This is a kid who came in at the end of last year, won three games in a row, won the first two games this year, and just has been unable to do anything since then. Scoring update, Southern Cal leading Arizona 7-6. That's at the half. I think, Mike, sometimes as a quarterback, you know, you just lose momentum. He, he was throwing the ball well those five games, and all of a sudden he, he had a bad game, and he just hasn't been able to come back. First and ten, Penn State trying to nail the lid down on the Mountaineers after getting their first turnover. Won't get much on this inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line. I really think it's similar to basketball players in a, a shooting slump. And you start aiming the ball, you start thinking instead of just shooting. And you know, if you ever if you ever analyze shooting those balls that they shoot in the NBA or in the major college games, yeah. baseline with a guy in your face falling away and they hit him. But if you ever thought about it, you'd never take the shot. And I think that's what's happening right now. He's a little gun shy. Well, a lot of times coaches say, uh, you know, it's nice to have smart players, and it is, but it is at, at this level, you can't be thinking, you have to react. That's right. And he's not doing it right now. Schaefer to throw. Got Coates out there. Coates avoids one tackle and then stacked up at the 25-yard line. And Penn State is not known. I'm sorry, Thomas. They're absolutely not known for giving quarterbacks time to think. They no. barely have time to react most of the time. Blair Thomas, the uh, successor, certainly, to D.J. Dozier. He's a sophomore this year. May have an equipment repair. He's going to have to come off the field on third and four. Going to work on that pad around his left elbow. Part of the sellout crowd of 63,500 here at Mountaineer Field. Schaefer on third and four under pressure. Throws complete to Giles. Giles beats Stacy Smith over there and has the first down. And Penn State just not making any mistakes. Looking for their eighth straight win of the season. 
And the ball's at the West Virginia 13. Three minutes, 36 seconds to go third quarter. Joe Paterno standing alongside uh, fullback Tim Manoa. Schaefer wants to throw again. Blitz. He got rid of it, and it's tipped in the air and hits the ground incomplete. Almost caught by Bob Marasco, the backup tight end, but it just hit the ground before he could grab it. And one of the few times they have had pressure on Schaefer. Well, he had a lot of time initially. Drops back here nicely. They're running a crossing pattern. You can see the two receivers. Now he wants to throw to Marasco, but he wasn't open right then. Now he's going to throw to his back. It's going to go through his hands and off his helmet, and Marasco almost makes a fabulous catch right here. Right through Dozier's hands. This ball should have been caught. DJ should have caught this ball. Nice throw by Schaefer. Right in. Right through his hands. And then almost. Schaefer again. Look back the other way. And Dozier driven out of bounds at the 10. Penn State's going to go back and look at these films, and actually John Schaefer's going to be depressed, and so are the, the offensive coordinators, because they've had people open all night. They've sure either have. dropped a couple or he's overthrown wide open. The, the uh, offensive backs have been open all night. And even with those problems, he's 10 out of 18 for 141 yards and a touchdown, so... Uh, it's hard to cry when you're winning 16-0, too, yeah. but, they, you know, they, they want to complete those passes, and I know DJ wants to catch those balls. Third down, seven from the West Virginia 10, and the Mountaineer defense has got to be getting tired. They have been out there all night long. Schaefer to throw. The blitz coming, gets rid of it, and it's dropped again. That time, Marosco had a shot at it and couldn't hold it. Oh, that was an excellent pass, because he just got canned. Boy, he put that right on the money. They really unloaded on Schaefer. See if you would have caught this pass, viewers. Right in it. Oh, he only one hand, but I think he could have reached with both. I do and coaches too. do not like it when you reach with one hand because normally that ball might be popped up right there and be intercepted. It's the Massimo Manca show. He's been good from 42, 37, 22. He's missed from 34 and 32. He's got another shot. And he knocks this one through. Four out of six field goals for Massimo Manca. He has been Penn State's scoring machine. And the Nittany Lions now lead the Mountaineers of West Virginia. 19 to nothing. They've been at the 22-yard line three or four times exactly at that spot. It's like they run to that spot and they tackle. There's Darren Fulton winning a yard deep in the end zone. Maka this time to the goal line, and Fulton let it go through his hands. It'll roll out of the end zone, and West Virginia will start from the 20. It's been a tough year for the Mountaineers. They really expected a lot, even though they were young, and then they had some problems with guys who uh, either decided not to come back, fifth-year players, a couple of people flunked out, ten and people. they have been in trouble. Total of ten players that uh, Don Nealon expected to help this team. They've lost them for a variety of reasons. A couple of the kids just didn't come back for their fifth year. And the Boo Birds are out after Mike Timko. And uh, and they're right. They can. They've had receivers open against this Penn State defense. They just haven't gotten them involved. Timko will give it off on the ground, and it's under Johnson, number 34, getting his first chance to carry the football. He and Craig Taylor, number 20, are in there in the West Virginia offense, and Don Nealon trying to get something started on the ground. That's one of the few times we've seen that quick hitting for it. Those are the plays I expected. There's the scoring drive after the interception. Went 35 yards, and Manka again with his fourth field goal that gave Penn State a 19-0 lead. If you run those quick draws like that, quick traps, then you can set up your play action passes. They just have better. Gain of three, makes it second and seven. Tim Coe with a quick drop. Under pressure, got rid of it, and throws incomplete. Trying to throw to Johnson, coming out of the backfield. Duffy Cobbs with some pretty good coverage. And you can't fault Tim Coe for that one. He was in the grasp as he unloaded. But look at the stats. Four completions, only 30 yards. He's been so harried back there. You've got to feel sorry for him. He came yeah. into the game, you know, mentally... Uh, down you know they really had given the job to Ben Reed they taken it away from him he was so you know fired up for the season he comes into this game and he really hasn't had any time back there no he sure has Penn State just saddles up and rips third and seven West Virginia fake to Johnson Tim Cole on the run he's gonna keep it this time and he's got the first down at the 31 maybe that is the way to do it. Just go back, let him come after you, and then set sail. Let's check in with Larry Bernetti. He has another scoreboard update. 
West Virginia with the ball at its own 31, first and 10. Mountaineers need a couple of scores to get back in this one. Johnson, he tries to cut it outside. Gets to the 35, gain of four or five. Good tackle by Marcus Henderson. The hero who came up to make the tackle. Well, Shane Conlon, uh, number 31, top of your screen, right there in the middle. Returning All-American, considered by Penn State coaches to perhaps be the best linebacker they've ever had. Watch his pursuit. He'll play off the blocker. You, know, you keep hearing that a lot of these players on Penn State aren't that fast. The kid's a solid 4-6. He hits. Very intelligent player. And as you can see there, he pursues all over the field. Second and six for the Mountaineers. Tim Phil play action. Gun this one over the middle, and it's complete to Harvey Smith. That's the best pass Tim Coe has had tonight. He really gunned it. Well, I think it was the best protection and the best pass. And you're right, Mike. He just absolutely drilled this ball into, in between the zone to Harvey Smith. He's made a couple nice catches. Let's see this time. He's got plenty of time. He's going to step up into the pocket and let it go right over his shoulder, proper form. And he's happy. He knows he threw a good pass. And Harvey Smith came down with it. And that's what you have to do against Penn State. You have to hit those zones when you have a chance. This guy's a male model in the offseason. Baseball head. First and ten. West Virginia in Penn State territory. They split the backs and Tim Coe. Trick play. They go to tally. He can throw it. And he's got a man downfield complete. That's a nice pickup, wasn't it? Like he turned two. They hit it to Calvin Phillips. Short to second to first. I like it. Tally, the former quarterback. It's a one hopper. He's going to pick it up clean. And he put up some good numbers last year as a quarterback, I might add. Now he's a wide out. Nice pickup. Now he's going to deliver the ball. Oh, that's a nice pass. I don't now know if the balance was planned, but it puts a lot of pressure on him. You know, they tell a lot of guys when they do that to try to make it bounce because you get a true bounce off the AstroTurf. First and 10, West Virginia, and Tim Coe pulls out. And no snap from Kevin Koken. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Penalties, I believe that's the seventh penalty on the Mountaineers this year, or this game. Make it eight. As we said before, Penn State doesn't need your help. They're doing just fine, thanks. Don Nealon really upset. Kevin Koken, the center, is going to do it again. This time he moves to his body instead of his hands. And a lot of that has to do with the fact they've had two different quarterbacks in yeah. different weeks and different cadence. It's tough on a center. Eight penalties, 80 yards. It's first and 15 now for West Virginia. Smith and Grantis Bell, the wide receivers to the near side, or make it to the far side of the field. And they're throwing to Grell, almost intercepted. The pass to Bell and Henderson gave it to him. did intercept it. Marcus Henderson with a great play. And I will tell you right now, that is Joe Paterno's coaching that allows him to make that interception. Well, let's see if this was caught. I know in the NFL they'd have replayed this one. This would be up in the booth, and we'd be calling this one. He just read the hitch, and he cuts in front of him. And he did not catch it. Oh, that he ball. didn't catch it. No. And, uh, we can't signal down there to, to turn it around. No way. That, that ball. Close. Nice acting, though. Yeah, it was. And a break for Penn State. They'll take over at the 36. From that angle, it did not look like he had the ball at all. Schaefer throwing to a wide open receiver, and that's Eric Hamilton. Tackled by Lockwood, but boy, was he open. Well, I've actually been very impressed with the way John Schaefer's thrown these balls. He's really dropped them into the zone. Uh, Hamilton was wide open, just a crossing route, but he dropped it right in. Schaefer's a very good tough passer. The play well, on that interception, that looked like the Mountaineers got a tough break on that one. Hamilton made a great play. I know one thing. We, we qualified to do it in the NFL. We could make the call. That didn't look too tough to me. Yeah, what do you that's think? right. Sat up there and I saw the ball hit the ground. Penn State has not had to punt the ball tonight. They have it at the West Virginia 33. Schaefer wants to throw again. Under pressure, they got him this time. And the sack will go to Chris Parker, number 94, and Darren Whitten, number 92. Good coverage by the Mountaineers secondary that time, and Schaefer just saved a mistake and pulled it down. That's interesting, though. Penn State up 19-0. They throw two straight passes yeah. at the end of third quarter. That is the end of the third quarter of play for Morgantown, West Virginia, and our score is Penn State 19 and West Virginia nothing. 
start blitzing now. They got to get some big plays, Mike. They just are going to have to gamble. West Virginia now up to uh, out of embarrassing territory at 80 yards total offense, but the uh, rushing statistics still not doing him any good. And Penn State just rolling it up, leading in everything, including time of possession. Second and 17. Coach in motion. Delay. Down to the 35-yard line goes Blair Thomas. Tackle made again by Darnell Warren, number 54. He's got a good ball game for the Mountaineers, and Thomas is going to be slow to get up. Oh, he is really having a tough time coming on. I know one thing. He came in here with, uh, they came in with some big rushing averages, and they're going to go down a little bit tonight. Well, it's ringing, and he can't answer. That's a scary feeling. I had five concussions personally. Was hospitalized four times. My IQ dropped a few points. The effects still show, too. <laughs> well, that's why I went into this profession. <laughs> Perfect. A... I was digging enough without concussions. <laughs> Third and 12. Schaefer to throw. Comes the blitz. Fumble. And Penn State got it back somehow. Number 89, Rodney Wilson, coming like a freight train. And John Schaefer got it from the blind side. That's exactly what we just mentioned a minute ago. They've got to start gambling. They need it. It's a shame, though. Again, a bad break. They didn't recover that ball. Yeah. Most of the time, you're going to get that ball. That's right. Oh, Rodney Wilson leveled him, though. Penn State is going to have to punt for the first time. There's John Schaefer. He'll never see that. He's looking right at you, which is his right-hand side. He never feels the guy on the left. Rodney Wilson up. It looks like West Virginia's going to recover, but an alert play by Penn State. Bruno to punt, hangs up a beauty, and it will take a West Virginia bounce and then kick out of bounds. 32-yard kick for Bruno, who had been averaging 39.4. Timeout with 13.46 left, a 19-0 ball game. Chuck Lavinius, or Chuck Lavinius, rather. Some bell in motion. Delay. And Undra Johnson will get back to the yard of scrimmage. Well, Mike, I think, I think that's the advantage of having some security. And he kind of said it jokingly, but he said, you know, I, I'm not worried about my job right now. Yeah. And I'm not going to give up the eligibility for those uh, freshman quarterbacks. TCU as Houston comes back to make it close. Michigan State now pulling away from Minnesota. Eastern Tennessee State laying it on Wofford. Second and ten. West Virginia just unable to do anything on offense. They throw the quick pass this time, got Phillips, and Phillips is ripped as he's got first down territory. Duffy Cobbs just leveled him. I think Duffy Cobbs is going to be a surprise first or second round draft yeah. choice. I really do. He's tough. Excellent coverage guy, and watch this hit. This is a nice pass, and he puts it some heat on this ball. He gets quickly to the receiver, and watch Duffy Cobbs. 16, right in the middle of your screen. One-on-one -on -one tackle, and he just doesn't bring the guy down. He drops him. For Phillips, it was tough because he never saw it coming. He was looking over the middle, and Phillips or Cobbs came the, from the other direction. But a lot of DBs there will be very tentative about their tackle. We've seen Cobbs. He's very confident about not getting beat deep. He's already picked one tonight. Now he makes some big hits. First down, Mountaineers, and that pass is the kind of thing they wanted to, wanted to do the entire game. Earlier, I said the, the interception that Henderson picked off, I credit Joe Paterno. I've seen him so many times scout tendencies that the other team has and he will tell them if the guy stands straight up on your side you just walk to a spot and the ball will be there and Henderson did it. They'll go with a running play that gets absolutely nothing may have lost a yard and Penn State's defense with Pete Kirkendall leading the charge number 73 just so tough. We just mentioned Cobbs on that play he's the left cornerback he actually blitzed on a running down they blitz their corner they throw a lot of things at you I mean their defense is very solid, but they throw a lot of things. West Virginia can be very proud of its defense tonight. They have really hung in there. When the offense gains uh, less than 20 yards rushing, they got 17 now and 21 carries. Uh, your defense is doing a job just to keep in the ball game. Tim Coe. Stop and go, Pat. Oh, this one up. He's got Bell open. Grannis Bell at the 19-yard line. And Bell really outdistanced Marcus Henderson. If he'd thrown it a little farther, it's a touchdown. 
I was just going to say, before that play, when someone like Duffy Cobbs and the cornerbacks are overplaying these hitch patterns, what you got to do is run a stop and go. And here it is. Granite Bell. Stop, little pause. The cornerback came up for the hit, and he hung it up. But it's still a completion, and they could use it. That's he ran excellent right, coaching, though. He ran right past Dwayne Downing. Backup cornerback and Grannis Bell, the fastest West Virginia receiver. One of many players out of Florida gives him a first down at the 19. Tim Cove checking off at the line of scrimmage. He's got Bell open, didn't throw it, now he wants to run at the 18-yard line. Grannis Bell was wide open at the sideline. Tim Cove was looking at him and then pulled the ball down. You know what happened? He was running an out and up that time. And uh, Duffy Cobbs just wouldn't have any of it. He said, I know you're going to run it out and up. And he was about eight yards behind him. It was a pre-ordained uh, pass pattern, so he couldn't throw that out. And you're right, he was eight or nine yards open. And then he turned up the field, and Cobbs was waiting for him. Second and nine for the Mountaineers. Crowd trying to get into the ball game. 11.05 to go. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up, and he dumps it over the middle, and Wynn dropped the ball. Keith Wynn, the sophomore tight end, had it in his hands, tried to spin around and drop it. Excellent job of uh, pass blocking on this play. They did do a great job. Oh, it up. He just threw it too high. And again, that's part of the problem of being uh, five foot 11 or six feet is that yeah. the trajectory of the ball sometimes will take off on you getting it over. Oh, he's so disappointed. He had the guy wide open again. Another nice call, nice design of a play. And he completes it. Third down and nine. Four-man rush. Timko's got room to run, and then he stumbled. And they bury him at the 14-yard line. He picked up five. Timko hesitated, or he could have gotten another five yards. He's a tough kid. He is really a smart player. And the one thing you have to remember, when a player is not doing well as you would hope, he's still trying. I mean, he's not out there trying to mess it up. Our score with 10 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the fourth quarter, 19-0. And West Virginia, of course, has to go for it on fourth and five. Blitz. Tim Cove fumble. And Penn State will recover, and it stops the drive. Tim Cove just buries his head in the AstroTurf. Never had a chance on that play. Mike. No. Immediate pressure, and it never stopped coming. He avoided a couple guys. Never had a chance to even look for a receiver. Again, they're going to take the Freeman and the blitz up the middle with Con Shane right there. Has him. Kirkendall strips the ball, but it's really, really irrelevant at that point yeah, because uh, they weren't going to make the first down. He never even had a chance to look at his receivers. No, nope, sure didn't. Timeout with 10-10 to go in the ball game. It is still Penn State 19, West Virginia nothing. Boards, the Mountaineers had it deep in Penn State territory and couldn't convert on fourth and five, and then the Lions have the football at their own 16. Dozier's back in there along with Manoa. Dozier. Sweeping right, driven out of bounds at the 20-yard line. And Matt Kisner, number seven, the senior quarterback out of Youngwood, Pennsylvania, is into the ball game for John Schaefer. Notre Dame, now a final. They beat Navy 33 to 14. And the midshipmen have just never had any luck with Notre Dame. Southern Cal over Arizona, 7-6, still third quarter. Michigan State opening it up over Minnesota. Nevada Reno, a three-point score, first quarter, or lead row. Manoa. Got away from Smith, still on his feet to the 30, 31 yard line. It'll be a first down for the Nittany Lions. Manoa, we have seen him the second time this year on ESPN. He is just so impressive. 227 pounds, and he can run. He's definitely, he's a very, uh, very strong as a blocker, but as you can tell, he can run. He's an excellent receiver. He's one of those guys that's going to sneak into the pros also. Both of those fullbacks are going to start in the professional uh, in the NFL within a couple of years. And they'll be excellent players. Look at Seattle. They got a pullback in the first round. That's now opening up uh, their running game. Kisner has not had a good year, hitting only about 33% of his passes as the backup to Schaefer. And they've given him some playing time. Manoa. 
fighting off tacklers. And look at the Mountaineers still swarming on, on defense. You got to give these guys a lot of credit. They just won't quit. And that's something Don Nealon said they wouldn't do. They will not give up. Pratisek right here is going to take on Grant. Again, he's going to stay engaged. You don't have to put somebody on their back all the time to make a good block. And he just opened it up for Manoa, and he just carried four people later. Frustration for a uh, nose guard. It's frustrating. He can't get away. He wants to make the tackle, but you're not going to bring down Manoa with one arm. Credit the, the center, Radisek, with that block. Travis Curtis just tried to put the big hit on with the shoulder, but didn't wrap him up. Go, Kisner wants to throw. Deep downfield. Got his man open. Round three, and he can't get to it. Had him beaten, and Ray Roundtree couldn't hold on. And a flag is down, and Kisner is roughed. Another penalty. Give him a first down. And they said the man who did it was Grant, the middle guard, got there late. You know, Mike Deshaw, deep. Penn State really was coming into this year. I mean, Schaefer and Kisner, two quarterbacks, were dead in a dead heat, and they yeah. really didn't know First who to start. Foul. Roughing the quarterback against the defense. Automatic first time. West Virginia's got to be very close to 100 yards in penalties in this ball game. Of course, this one does not come at a, a particularly crucial time. They have 95 yards on nine penalties, 849 to go in the ball game, but it does allow Penn State to keep this drive alive. Manoa, hard running fullback. Once again in on the tackle, Darnell Warren, number 54. And this Mountaineer defense really getting tired. Also in there is Bo Orlando, number 22. Larry Burnett has the scoreboard updates for us from Bristol. There, second and a yard for Penn State from the Mountaineer 35. Manoa again, big hole up the middle. You get a couple, and we'll have the first down. Eric Lester, number 59, is in on the tackle. West Virginia thought they stole the football, but a little late. Lester is another one of those linebackers who was the leading tackler with 63 tackles coming in. He hurt a knee, hasn't been able to play until late in the ballgame. The defense has played good ball tonight. Sure. Uh, they're losing 19-0. I know they're... They're feeling awful, they're frustrated, but uh, they've, they've played well. They've really contained most of the running game, and, you know, Penn State's had excellent field position too many times, and the offense just ha hasn't done enough. Yep. Penn State, 23 first downs in this ball game. Clock running with seven minutes and 39 seconds to go. And they'll give it off this time. To Dozier, who's back in the ball game, surprises me a little bit. And slow to get up David Grant, the middle guard. Dozier now 64 yards on 12 carries, and they'll take him out this time and bring David Clark back in. But put it in perspective, you know, in the first half, uh, their defense, West Virginia had to face 42 plays from Penn State. Penn State's defense only had to face 17 plays exactly. by the West Virginia offense. Where's you down? Coates in motion. And they'll give it to Manoa. Trying to get outside, not this time. He's buried by Darren Witten, number 92. Witten, another sophomore, 6'3", 226 from Oceana, West Virginia. I was hoping he'd make a tackle because this guy is pretty incredible. He's <laughs> one of the greatest athletes to ever play in West Virginia. He made All-State in football, baseball, and basketball. And most interestingly, Mike, he scored 74 points in one basketball game. Oh. Sounds like Pat McAnally. No, I scored 74 one season. Yeah, 74 had, one pregame. Yeah, oh, I was you hot had, one you had 74 rebounds in one game. Yeah, 73 were missed shots by me. Third and 11. And Kisner wants to throw. Here comes the blitz. Throwing for the end zone and overthrown. Intended for Eric Hamilton, number 30. Good pass coverage by the Mountaineers that time. The man back there was Dave Lockwood, number 41. So West Virginia holds. It's fourth and 11. Oh, no. Penn State. The best rested player on the Penn State team is coming out on the field. And that's the punter. John Bruno has only had to kick once tonight. Probably the best condition guy, too. But anyway, he's well rested <laughs> right now. Cleveland beats the Bullets in the opening game. Bruno trying to hang it up. He's got it out of bounds. 
Great kick by John Bruno. Put it out of bounds at the four-yard line. It hurts his average, only a 29-yard kick, but it did the job. It's a 19-point game with 6.08 left. In town, West Virginia, and some of the faithful starting to leave Mountaineer Field as their club is now 19 to nothing. West Virginia will start from its own four-yard line. Holly Field dives forward to the seven-yard line. Tough night for Timco. Seven out of 19, 107 yards, two interceptions. And he's been looking at a uh, group picture of the Penn State defense every time he drops back. Mike Beckers. Yeah, you really sideline. You know, you, you can't pay enough respect to a Penn State. You know, they had a very emotional victory last week over Alabama, yet they come back, they play so consistently. Yeah. This could have been a terrible place to play a game. It has been for West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> Not a happy stadium right now. Second and seven. Smith in motion. We'll give it to Hollifield. Hollifield hitting the backfield and driver. Ray Isom. Came up from the safety spot, and Hollifield continues to try to run east and west, and it hasn't worked. One thing special about both the Miami Hurricanes and the Penn State secondary, both of them, and one reason they're rated so high and their defenses are so good, they're their defensive backs tackle. They not just they don't just cover people very well. They're hitters, and that's very that's the combination you look for in the pros, and it's a combination any receiver or running back hates to see because. They just don't account for our safeties all the time with guards and tackles, and they come in clean. They just don't miss. They have a shot at somebody, they take them down. And Timko has to throw out of his own end zone. Going deep down sideline, and had a man out there and overthrew Bell, who had a couple of steps on Gary Wilkerson, number 19, the corner. Timko took that quick drop and unloaded it as quick as he could. And Lance Carrion will have to come in and punt. There's Carrion, number 18, 5'9", sophomore. And Coates will drop back to receive, standing at his own 40 or at the West Virginia 41 yard line. Doesn't think Carrion is going to get off much of the kick. And a low line drive, but it got away from Coates. Carrion got a break. Coates picks it up at the 45, tries to get to the sideline and run out of bounds. Good coverage by West Virginia. We have a timeout with 4.31 to go in the game after a 49 yard punt for the Mountaineers. First down by Matt Smith. A week ago, LSU with an excellent offense and one of the great defense minds in college football. And Penn State will give it off. Redmond fumble. West Virginia picks it up. The Mountaineers will recover. And the recovery made by Willie Edwards, number 47. So Redmond, the fullback, fumbles. Well, just a conservative play. They're just running. Just never got the handoff. You know, he got it but sometimes when plays start bad they just end bad in that case he didn't get a smooth hand up he got it the control of it again then he got stripped later he's probably happy he still had the ball then the second later he didn't have it first that turnover for the Nittany Lions both teams now have uh, or West Virginia has two rather you just don't expect to fumble on plays like that no. very simple trap up the middle run conservative play and then you have a turnover so West Virginia will start from its own 46 yard line and around and Smith wants to throw I think Fakes it, then guns it, and throws short. Trying to throw for Phillips. They had three guys around him. Yeah. But I'll tell you, when a wide receiver gets his hands on the ball, or a halfback, they're going to throw it. I mean, he wanted to throw that <laughs> ball. Right. Double pump. I'll tell you, I guarantee you that in practice, he was wide open. That always yeah. works in practice. And it's not been a good night for Mountaineer football fans. Down 19 nothing with 4.21 to go. These people love their football. Tim Cohen, second and 10. And the first team is still in there. Here comes the blitz. And Tim Cohen is sacked at his 31 yard line. Well, West Virginia did a good job of initially picking up the blitz, and Tim Cohen couldn't find anybody. Let's go to Larry Burnett for another scoreboard update. He's around right now, and it's third and 21. Penn State wants to shut out. Bell in motion. Another blitz. 
and they'll throw the screen and oh, he was so open. Incomplete Eddie Hill and Timko threw it very high. Perfect. And call. Hill couldn't pull it down. Just an excellent yep. call on that play. He was so wide open. He might not have picked up the first down, but he'd have gotten a lot of yardage. But again, early in the game, Tim Cole, you know, Mike's had a tough night. He was throwing the ball on the ground, and then lately he's been throwing it too high. It's very frustrating for a coaching staff and for a player. Lance Carrion, the 138-pounder, will come on to kick. He's been getting off some low-line drives, and this is another low kick. And a fair catch by Isom. 40-yard kick. Timeout on the field. A penalty flag now. We'll check it when we come back. penalties this year but this is the first one it's a personal foul unsportsmanlike conduct Ray Isom for taunting the guy handing him the ball I don't even think he said anything to him I didn't realize that was a penalty uh, I don't think Joe Paterno is going to be very happy about that uh, you don't want to make people remember things like that next time you play an unusual coming out of Isom too uh, I, I, very su surprised me I guess the uh, defender was pretty surprised when he handed him the ball too good thing he called a fair catch but of all the uh, all the things to get a 15-yard penalty for, you're taunting. right. We have seen some strange ones. The silent taunting, and the ball to the guy. We've seen balls dropped in the last play of the game. Yeah. Matt Kisner with 3:29 to go in the ball game. Sid Lewis, number 21, is into the ball game at a wide receiver spot. Clark, 48, is the tailback. And they'll give it to Redmond. The pullback driven out of bounds. The 17-yard line. Darnell Warren makes the tackle again. Here's the way the scoring has gone. First possession, and Penn State gets the touchdown. Schaefer, 23-yard pass to D.J. Dozier. Made it 7-0. Massimo Manka, after he missed two field goals, hit a 42-yarder to make it 10-0. Monka again from 37 yards out. It was 13 to nothing. Then Monka again, this time 22 yards to make it 16 nothing. And they capped off the scoring with who else? Massimo Monka, 27 yard field goal. And that's the way the score stands right now at 19 nothing. And it's Clark. Penn State just working on the clock. Bo Orlando in on the tackle for West Virginia. Stop. Well, the Penn State backs, they don't stop just because they have a 19-0 lead. Nice block outside. Now, he's going to run over some people. They have five or six guys that do that all night long. They're not going to stop just because they have the game put away. I wonder if Penn State, uh, Tim Brando got to keep that Penn State uniform. He looked good in it. Looked good, good in black and white, didn't he? Only 12 rushing yards for the Mountaineers tonight. Kisner wants to throw. Deep side line complete to Giles. Pushed out of bounds to 45-yard line. Edwards forced him out. Surprised me a little bit. Here's some other scores for you. Southern Cal over Arizona. Third quarter, 10-6. Nevada Reno now leading 10-0. This Mike Timko has had a tough, tough night for West Virginia. And he was the only hope the Mountaineers had a quarterback as Ben Reed was hurt, simply couldn't throw. You could see when he was throwing it on the sideline. And one of his teammates comes over, and they're all coming over, trying to give him a, a little bit of support. That's nice to see. That's what college uh, football is supposed to be about. Kind of kid you want to root for. But uh, Penn State not rooting for him. I mean, they're coming after trying to make his life miserable. You know, we had uh, one number we've called a lot tonight, Darnell Warren, number 54, yeah. linebacker, is an excellent player. And it really reminds me of, uh, you know, we had a heck of a time figuring out what his name is. Here's the remaining games for Penn State. <laughs> and I do think they're going to go in. I think they're going to go undefeated, although Notre Dame, it could be a tough one. Notre Pitt, Dame's playing well. Pitt can do it, too. Now, what about Warren, about his uh, first name? I was going to say, it kind of reminded me of my favorite line. We were talking about the best lyrics of all time. And in Rocky Raccoon by Paul McCartney and John Lennon, it's the ball to around 45. Redmond and Clark, the running backs. Clark. Picks up another first down into West Virginia territory at the 44-yard line. That'll stop the clock momentarily as they move the chains. West Virginia's defense going to sleep tonight. 
So first down, there's Clark. You're gonna wake up with a lot of bruises, though. Yeah. Been a lot of hitting tonight. Yeah, they'll wake up Monday. <laughs> Clock running, approaching the two-minute mark. And the whistle blows. I think they uh, didn't get it off in the 25-second. Clock expired on them. And they are calling a procedure, not a delay penalty against Penn State. Procedure which will cost them five yards. First time. You know, Mike, we just we've seen it week in and week out. It's interesting. Penn State's up 19-0 and they throw that pass. Let's yeah. Go. And uh, everybody is doing it, aren't they? I, I guess it's a second string quarterback, Kisner, and they want to give him experience in case he ever has to play. That's the sure. rationale we've heard. John Schaefer on the sideline, who just does nothing but win and had a great game tonight for Penn State. Clark is stuffed near the line of scrimmage. Number 95, Pat Marlette made the tackle. Let's go to Larry Burnett and the scoreboard update from Bristol. A wild one out there, 24-14. Clock is running. We're down to a minute, 22 seconds to go from Morgantown. And it's second and 15. <laughs> and Kisner on the delay. Clark broke a tackle and then brought down. Good tackle by Darren Witten, number 92. Clark return. <laughs> Our Hartford player of the game is Penn State quarterback John Schaefer. 11 out of 20, 171 yards and a touchdown. His stat should have even been better than that. He had a couple of drop, couple of drop passes that could have been more touchdown. Clock continues to run, 46 seconds left. Penn State just running out the clock. Clark, flag down as he shakes off a tackle, gets to the 35-yard line. We'll check the penalty as they stop the clock with 30 seconds to go. This is a tough time for players to be out there, especially on defense. They've played so hard, and they've been out there so long. You really, it, it sounds cliche-ish, but you really do have to play hard because as soon as you let up, that's when you do get hurt. You've got to protect yourself, and the only way to protect yourself is to hit people. West Virginia penalized 100 yards now in this ball game. Penn State's been penalized 60 yards. It's really been an odd game. <laughs> it has. It's hard to believe they only have 19 points and yep. they missed two field goals. Because West Virginia's offense has just not been able to do anything. And their defense really acquitted themselves very well. And I know Joe Paterno, I just saw our cameraman uh, Silvio over there waving. <laughs> Silvio wanted to get on the air. Good move, Silvio. The artistic cameraman. Yeah. Could be the last play of the ball game. And they'll give it to Redmond. Redmond wrapped up, knocked down in the backfield. Nice tackle that time by Bob Dunn, number 71. And that'll end the ball game. Joe Paterno has won his 195th game of a brilliant coaching career. His 21st year comes over to Don Nealon. They shake hands in the middle of the field. And Don Nealon, you have to feel a little bit for him. He's got uh, quite a bit of talent out there, but freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, and they've been banged up a lot, and you can't win that way against Penn State. No, I think, I really think West Virginia's got a solid program. I think Don Nealon will come back and win. I think it's going to be an excruciating uh, end of the season for him. It's very yeah. tough losing all this. This is what they were shooting for all year long, Stan.